Truth Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. Won't you come, come and take me into the Truth Seeker Podcast. Dark elves, psychics, everything's ungodly, dark savage. Streaming live at truthseeker.com. She's not a Christian. Give it up, y'all. Your portal to the paranormal, esoteric, and all things spiritual. She's tampering in dark savage stuff. And now, your host, Truth Seeker. Yo, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you to everybody who has been supporting my work via Patreon. Uh, this show is a listener-funded show, and I'm not able to do this without your help. So, again, thank you for uh, for helping me bring this to the people. Again, I think that every soul that is touched, every uh, person who's able to turn on the light in the midst of their own darkness, man, I think you share in, in the midst of that harvest. And uh, it, it's it's sowing into good ground. So thank you guys for um for over the years, I mean, there's people who's been with me now for a couple of years and just believing in the vision and you guys see the fruit. Thank you. If you'd like to support, head on over to Patreon, patreon.com backslash true seeker. You get access to a bunch of really cool stuff. It's not just sending your money. You get all my music, 200 plus songs. You get access to our Thursday night school of the mystics, a bunch of really cool stuff. I'm continuing to add stuff over there. There's levels where you get my guided meditations. I'm going to be working on some more of those bunch of really cool stuff. <clears throat> Make sure you check it out, patreon.com backslash truthseeker. And for those of you who have not checked out the new book yet, Spirit Realm, Angels, Demons, Spirits, and the Sovereignty of God, forward by Jordan Maxwell. If you haven't checked it out, what what are you doing with your life? What are you sleeping on? Come on, check it out. It'll bless your life. I, I know it will. Uh, if you can't afford a uh, physical copy, the, the PDFs are really cheap on Amazon as well. Make sure you check it out. It'll bless you. Um, all that good stuff. So we're going to go ahead and jump into today's, tonight's podcast with my friend Elixio. I'm going to let you uh, <laughs> pronounce your last name, man, because you, you told us last time. It's like, just stick to the first name. What's your last mm. How do you pronounce your last name? Well, my whole name is Alexio. Last name is Bailu. 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 It's French. Okay. My first right. name is Spanish, so Alexio Bailu. But like I tell everyone, somebody call me Lex. Yeah. Okay. Lex. Okay. <laughs> well, welcome to the True Seeker Podcast, man. Well, first of all, Happy New Year. Who would think that 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 uh, this would be what I'd be doing on uh, January 1st? And if this is any indication, I'm in for one hell of a ride come 2020. <laughs> and so definitely grateful for the opportunity to be here. I um, enjoyed 
enjoyed of our recent interactions and I'm really flattered by the opportunity and the trust. So good night to all of your listeners. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone. Hope it is that you all had your ham and turkey and that you actually do make those New Year resolutions to lose weight like most of us are setting and probably procrastinating on already. Yep. Yeah, I've 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 got a couple that I'm trying to execute myself and uh, <laughs> just a lot of new new vision, man. I know the whole cliche mm-hmm. 2020 vision, but but really just kind of getting that vision. I think we need to do that every day, but you know, the marker of a new year is a good uh, mm-hmm. place to start, right? It is. It is um, a fresh start and with a lot of optimism and so I'm hopeful that that those of us who have new uh, agendas or want to continue on what it is that we were supposed to do in 2019, that we would experience renewed, um, several things, renewed passion as well as we'll find it easier to uh, stick to, stick to the length and breadth of what it is that we have set out to do, even when it doesn't seem as. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, th- that's, that's huge consistency, right? You, something you started, make sure that you you stay with it, and you're gonna you're gonna see it through. That's huge. I mean, with, with everything that I've been doing the last couple of years, consistency. Even when you want to abandon it, you want to jump ship. It's like, no, I'm sticking with it because mm-hmm. I I made the decision to. You know. Yeah, absolutely, and I think um, as well as I, I, there's a book by Barbara Sher called "Refuse to Choose." Uh, she talks about this group of people she calls scanners. And the fact is that there are those of us, a lot of times we're not open and honest about what in fact we were actually pursuing. And when it is that we've actually come to the end of what we really wanted. And so usually we're, we're making decisions based upon social expectations as to what it is that we should set our focus on, what should be our priority, uh, what it is that we should set our agenda to do as opposed to what's really connecting with your heart. So I give an example, you wrote a book. And I have to purchase a copy of it. Um, and get um, I love to read it and to see what it is that you have to say. Especially, I've never read any good books as it pertains to like ghosts. I do get into vampires and werewolves and all that stuff in any of your work. Uh, I've I don't really talk a lot about it, but I've I've had some some experience with the vampire stuff, but I don't really go into a lot of it. Okay. Well, we need to I talk. I tie it all back to the Bible. Like I tie it all back to the <laughs> scriptures, which is the interesting I believe thing. You. Yeah, I, I believe it should be fascinating. And what I'm what I'm saying is that when it is that you write a book, typically the expectation is that you write a book to make it a bestseller, or that the agenda for you writing a book should be to get it make sales. Sometimes the focus for you writing a book, if you're honest, is just because you want to enjoy the opportunity of putting your putting your words um, and your thoughts together. To so your focus and your uh, your agenda could be completely different from what it is that people expect you to do for do it for. And you have to be honest about why is it that you're doing this and what it is that you're actually going for so it is that you don't be frustrated by the fact that you don't get someone else's reward or expectation because that doesn't mean you failed. Rather, you got what it is that you were looking for, and that's success. For sure. I mean, that's with creating anything, like with the music and stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, uh, first of all, I want to create music that I like, that I enjoy. Exactly. And people are like, man, especially it's like peering into, peering into a new style, uh, even the, like the lyrical content and stuff like that. It was like, mm-hmm. a lot, like it's not mainstream music, right? It mm-hmm. definitely has its own niche, the content. Like we're talking about stargates, we're talking about portals, we're talking about ascension, we're talking about meditation mm-hmm. and all this kind of stuff. So there's like a niche for that. You got to kind of find the niche and stuff. But then like it it was me creating music that I enjoyed and then, mm-hmm. hey, everybody else enjoys it. That, you know, that's even better. But it's exactly. first of all, making something that I want to listen to. Like it's almost like seeing the need and then feeling it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, uh, Absolutely. And anything that you create. It should be, and it's going to be successful if, if it fills a need, man, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. The first thing that should be met, met is yours. Mm-hmm. Your own personal fulfillment. So, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Uh, hey, let everybody know where you're from, man. I am from that beautiful island of Nassau, Bahamas. I live on the beautiful island of Nassau, Bahamas. Well, I guess it would be New Providence would be the island. Nassau is the capital city. Most people know about Nassau because of one location. That would be the Atlantis. And so usually people here, when they think about the Bahamas, they think about the Atlantis and our beaches, sun, sand, and sea. And so, yeah, that's uh, where I'm from. And it's a, it's a small country. We have less than 500,000, 750,000 people, I believe. And so it's definitely kind of close-knit culture, community, um, 
a former British colony. And so you see a lot of those colonial traits and even influences upon how it is that we function. So Bahamians are the type of people who will be in 100 degree weather in a full suit and will drink tea in hot weather. Uh, a lot, it's, uh, it's where it is that you see a lot of offshore banks and you see uh, our number one industry is tourism. And so it's very much given towards hospitality, towards other people. And uh, it's, it's, it's definitely a, an interesting country to live in. And I love it here. I, lo I love my nation. They piss me off. But I, I definitely love being in the Bahamas. Can, I can say that right. Okay, I think yeah, yeah. so. You um, can, I, yeah. I, 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 I love being a Bahamian, and uh, being from my country means that people. I guess I come have kind of an international a flair when it is that people meet me, because usually individuals have not met someone who was from the Bahamas. They just know of the country. Yeah, that's interesting, um, mm -hmm. and it's something about you know the way that you speak. And you're, you know, what I'm saying your dialect, and you're very <laughs> yeah. well. You, I, I feel like you're very well spoken as well. There's this weird thing to like, especially coming. You know, you have a lot of people in the U.S. who who follow your work and 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 support mm -hmm. you and things like that. And uh, there's this, it's this weird essence of something different. And like, even like wh whether it's somebody with a British accent, they they automatically sound a lot more intelligent or like they know what they're talking about. Have you noticed that? That there, you Actually, get a, a little bit more it, love, it like <laughs> out of a country. <laughs> it is part of my charm, actually, and I, 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 I finally opened and opened myself up to it because my friends who are, who are African American have told me, they said, you know, Alexia, like, part of the reason that you have quite got so much favor abroad and so many opportunities is because of the fact that though it is that you are a black man, you are not a black man from the USA. And so when it is that people meet you, you can get away with saying many things and doing things that they would not necessarily be okay with from someone who was from their own culture and country. And so, yeah, it's I, I can get on pulpits and in platforms wherever I'm speaking, and I can essentially blast them. And I can take a butcher knife and just go for gold and say what I what I really think about whole about a whole lot of issues and not blink. But you see it on my social media page. But <laughs> Americans love it. Yeah, he's not uh, he's not uh, really from here, guys. He doesn't speak. <laughs> <laughs> Bahamians hated them. Oh my God, my, my, they, they hated be like, what are you doing? Are you trying to start a goddamn riot or something along those lines? Yeah. But 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 yeah, that um, it, it gives me a measure of influence and clout. The other people don't get it, especially since it is they um, they know me typically as a prophet. So that 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 even allows for them this kind of John the Baptist feel as Elijah just voice crying out in the wilderness. He shows up from a different country, doesn't know what's, and he just gets in our business and throws stuff over and yeah, just gets get, uh, we allow, we allow him to be as radical as yeah. possible, and we'll have him back the next year. Yeah, there's something about that man. Um, and then like I think it kind of ties into the scripture a little bit too, where it talks about. Uh, a prophet is without honor in his own his home Seven country. They're like, oh, we grew yes. up with this guy, but then the other people are like, tell us more, tell us more, you know? Exactly, and then my, and then Bahamians get get jealous over the fact that they tell me I treat Americans differently. I said, number one, Americans treated me differently. They treated me a whole lot better than you all. I said that's why it is they have more favor with me, and y'all just jealous because of the fact that now I found myself amongst the people who celebrate me and honor me and I'm not going to back down or apologize for it. But they tell me that they can say something to me once an American says it, then I'll listen. But if it's from a Bahamian, I won't listen. I tell them, I said, furthermore, y'all cheat. <laughs> and I said, y'all will work me into the ground for nothing and whatnot. But um, yeah, I, I like them. I like my Bahamians a bit pissed off at me and a bit perturbed. Mm -hmm. Makes life a little bit more interesting. And I like, I love the fact that I get to go abroad to minister in the USA and uh, I kind of so many different individuals across the spectrum, spirituality, denominations, wherever it is. It's yeah. a joy. That's awesome. Where did, uh, where did that kind of cross for you? Or, or are you still crossing into, because I don't really know mm -hmm. much about you, right? I, f I found out about you through uh, Calvin Witcher. We did a thing where he he actually invited us to be a part of his uh, his mentorship program that he was doing with his community. He let us mm -hmm. come in, pray and prophesy and move some things around for people individually doing personal prophecies and things. And it was a beautiful mm -hmm. experience. And I love Calvin. That was awesome. So you were on, on the ticket. You, you, he is. You were on the ticket. And so it was me and you. And I met you that night via uh, uh, Zoom, his Zoom call mm -hmm. with about... 
30, 40 people or so. It was a lot of people there. And um, so I met you there and you were flowing in the prophetic just to, and you were talking about how you can just kind of tap in and just keep going and going and going and give words and things like that. And you did that night. You gave some some very accurate words. I mean, there are people mm-hmm. in tears and was moved. It was a powerful encounter. But that was the first uh, time I heard about you. I friended you after that. And then recently been the last couple of months been following some of your your posts and stuff, which have been hilarious and going off <laughs> with the memes and stuff like that. And just really it really feels like you're taking shots at what you're doing. Hashtag unpopular opinion. But you're taking shots yeah. at church culture and what these kind of like agreed upon things that are not biblical that we kind of maybe assumed were biblical or just as proper church etiquette. And you're taking shots at some of this stuff. And I feel like it sets people free and it makes them ask questions and stuff like that. So I was like, man, I got to I got to ask you more about about that stuff. And I really like your spirit. So I wanted to connect with you. But we really haven't connected much outside of that. So I wanted to, you know, yeah, we, we got we got to fix that. We need, we need to go to uh, to what's my favorite place where I go to crack about <laughs> my American. My American friends think it's so pathetic that I'm in love with Cracker Barrel. Like, yes, Take me to Cracker Barrel. What you know about the Waffle House, though, man? Listen, I will go. I'll go wherever. Uh, um, I hop. Take me to uh, Boston Market. All the places that American <laughs> Those are the cheap places, again. though, man. It's like take me uh, to Cracker Barrel. Take me to Waffle House. Listen, I'll save my. I'll save my pennies up and let's go and turn up. Well, with me, what happened is um, the, the way the way that occurred is that. Well, I'll just say this. From my childhood, I've always found myself in a, in a plurality of spiritual environments, even though primarily my, my focus and my, my personal growth has been within the context of Christian culture. And I definitely do consider myself a follower of Jesus Christ and what is he teaches and what is that he perpetuates as truth. Mm-hmm. The fact is that I, I, I spent my life even around, around divergent ways of viewing God and divergent spiritual experiences. My my next door neighbor was a beautiful Jehovah's Witness woman, and you know, by 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 predominant Christian thought, she would that would be considered a different religion, different yeah. spiritual path. And I would go with her to her gatherings. I would sit down, and she would teach me, and she would lecture. She would lecture me from from my childhood. I got older, and when I came, I grew up on an island that most of you will never visit, that you have never heard of. It's called the Isle of Andros, A-N-D-R-O-S. Everybody knows about NASA, which is the capital, but Andros is the largest island in the Bahamas, and it's 15 minutes from the capital. When it was that I became, when it was that I came to the capital to go to high school, I started just reading as much different material that I can get my hands on. And I was as much fascinated by Harry Potter as I was by Benny Hinn's books. I was as much fascinated. That's a good by, duo though, man. I know, right? Yeah. I was, I, I was as intrigued by the reading of Smith Wigglesworth, who was a famous evangelist for back in the day, oh, yeah. a lot of healing, one of science, one is America's Catherine Coleman. Kicking babies. I, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I was as much fascinated by his stuff as I was about um, um, understanding sexuality and as I was about understanding um, just different worldviews and different experiences. And then I began to become immersed even more so in supernatural counters and experiences. And so it, what, what has happened is over the years, even when it is that I've been off tertiary level education in the USA at, at Florida International University, I was constantly engaged and immersed in a plurality of spiritual experiences with individuals who didn't necessarily think how I thought. And it changes the way that you view life and how it is that you, you view, for me, church, culture, and how it is that I think that we should function. And I would say that my agenda isn't to get people to live according to the Bible, because there are a whole lot of things that you see in scripture that pretty much are messed up. And you can take one passage of scripture from any particular context and you can and you can utilize it to abuse people and to berate people to live a particular way uh, instead of liberating them. And so, really, my heart has been towards people living in freedom, for people living free from condemnation and shame, and to be to be empowered to be their best selves. And so, that's what I really take. I take shots of things that that tend to restrict people in that fashion. And when you live in a nation like I do, you have a lot of opportunities to take shots at stuff. And you have a lot of a lot of chances and many things to talk about, because you see the way in which is that religion can be used to oppress people instead of um, empower people to live free and without condemnation and shame. Was there any um, like 
was it was you combative at all like against like these different ideas that were coming in like well, were, like you know what i'm saying were you told like when you read harry potter were you told that you wasn't supposed to read it in church but, and one of the things that i did actually when i first started reading his work was i remembered it, i remember i started to have um and I don't think it was because of Harry Potter. It was actually because of a Christian book, I think, that messed me up. I don't know if you remember a book by Mary Kay Baxter. I've got it and in there. It, he came to set the captives free. Yeah, yes. that, that that book is a piece of trash. It was a big one back. Hey, it was big <laughs> back in the day. It is yeah. horrible. And after reading that type of material, I started having nightmares and just encounters. Demons some, were like, everywhere coming for your ass. They were everywhere. Exactly. <laughs> Ain't nothing happened to me with Harry Potter. But I was also reading some of his stuff, I think, simultaneously. And one of my mentors um, in church told me, you need to take his books in the back of your, of your apartment and you need to burn them. And that's what I did. And so I burned his stuff and I hate the fact that I burned them. But thankfully, I can still remember the books and I purchased all of them again over time. But yeah. uh, one of the, what, what, what happened is that for me, I just started to realize that so many ideas that I held and that I preached and that I perpetuated was in fact bondage. Uh, you know, um, it, it, creating a culture of control where it is the church leaders or people in positions of power felt as if that they can regulate and dictate people's lives, that they had an inherent authority and a right to tell us how it is that we should live our lives and what it is that we should do and what it is that we should not do. And that I, I came up in a culture, particularly within the charismatic field, you know, when, when you grew up in like mainstream denomination, like like the, I grew up in, uh, you 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 you're taught to be afraid of several things. Number one, sex is horrible, and you, you're taught that um, you should just be a nice person, stay up, live according to their rules and their traditions, and you're good. When you meet the charismatics, they hold different set of freaks, and it it, it can be it, it, it's it's just a whole whole different type of situation. And you know, and you um, speak it in tongues and fall down on all of this stuff. While it is that simultaneously uh, creating a living amidst the people that that think any and everything is a demon, and that 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 that, that utilize um, hyper spiritual language and practices for the purposes of um, controlling how people use their money, how it is that they use their time, where it is that they go, where it is that they don't go. It's really kind of like some Jim Jones type of mess. That, that 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 you can experience, and I started to go. I started to be in some of those communities, mm -hmm. started to sit in those spaces because I was just desperate. And when what started to happen is that I found myself processing and like this stuff don't make any sense. This isn't true. This isn't real. And I began to continue to look for voices who can, who can validate the fact that what I was what I was sensing was in fact the truth. And once I met them and I started to really look clearly at scripture and see that they didn't match up, that it wasn't about freedom, wasn't about empowering people, I got real pissed off and I just started going back at it. And so some of the people and things that I talk about, people who were really my friends, I was in these spaces, I had influence, I had clout in those in those arenas. But I just started to just come outside of those gates and I started to throw rocks at those glass windows because as far as I was concerned, this is bondage. This is this yeah. is toxic. This is controlling people's lives. And unfortunately, um, in, in, in the Christian culture and the Christian church, what can happen is that you can take you, you, you can take individuals who are sincerely passionate about growing and about Jesus and you can use that opportunity and monopolize upon it to basically get them to do whatever it is that you want and it's it, it's sad and it's one of those things that i do have you seen the video um this is going to an extremes right mm -hmm. uh but you've seen the video where the pastors got the the church uh people out there eating grass like cattle and stuff yeah. just because yeah. he told them to do it well i'll give an experience i i went to a ministry that was headed by a woman and i'll probably say if i'll send you a video for um she she isn't that extreme with getting people to eat grass but what will happen is that she she was the type of individual that that had all of these people believing that you know any and everything about them that they had demons they, and you know we could find a demon for any and everything and so i remember on sunday mornings when we would come around the pulpit area and she would start casting demons so all of us would be given plastic bags and paper towels and, and we were supposed to throw up yeah and bring up all of the demonic activity and oh, everything yeah. like that to get yeah. free and to get set free and there are and 
Um, I've been in a lot of those communities. Now I will yeah. say that I think there are there are real and, and people times. were doing it though. People were like, oh yeah, kind of training themselves how to yeah. use those muscles to throw up, like psychologically. No, I, right? I, 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 and because it's indoctrination, and then you are you on the floor of having seizures and you doing all of this stuff because yeah. that's what you thought you're supposed to do. And yeah. if I condition you long enough to be, to make you believe that you have something, you will live in that reality and according, and you will support those Scary. ideas with your practices. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, the um, we we kind of got into a little bit of that. It wasn't throwing up. It, it mm-hmm. could have got to that, but uh, the guy, one of the guys who discipled me, was really big into what he would call hacking up demons. He would start mm-hmm. coughing uncontrollably, like even like if even if it was like just some, you know how you know how somebody can preach and and then you feel mm-hmm. the anointing and it hits you and it kind of goes to the places in your mm-hmm. body. And he'll feel it and he'll start <clears throat> like coughing up demons and and getting and start crying and getting freedom but that was just in his head it was you know with the with the breath and with the ruach you know the connection there it was always just loud obnoxious coughing and he's like and he would feel a release from it because psychologically he had told himself that that's how the demons leave was that he, the first of all because he, he believed that he had a demon and what's funny is that when it is that you look in scripture, when people who are really demonized who are real devils uh, it was there was no question over the fact of whether or not that this that this was an, an a an, demonized a person, presence yeah. a presence in yeah. an, an, oper- an operation in their lives that was not something that made of their imagination. And so I, I, I've seen a few of those real ones, but more so than anything else, I just think that um, that unfortunately we create we create a space where in people look for reasons to not take responsibility for their lives or their uniqueness. And so when it is that you, you're taught that something is wrong with you, you will find some type of way to deal with it or get rid of it. And so you, you, will, you will find all of the deliverance books and, you know, um, all of your John Apollo Sanford, all of your, um, uh, let me see, um, Pigs in the Parlor. Yeah. And yeah. All, all of that stuff. And you will, you will create entire, uh, entire theological movements. I mean, I, I, know, I, know, I know some of the people who, who, who purported these ideas. It works. This, it, it, it like works for them. They though. make and, it, and they make millions of dollars yeah. off of people, and um, and so that because that's the excuse for any and everything that happens in people's lives. You got a demon. So when you started being conscious of that, you started calling that crap out, right? Yeah, I started calling just, it out. I start, what what happened with me is that um, well, here one of the things that that occurred was, and I think I remember when I ma- I made the post, I was a part of a. I made a post and they were on my mind. And when I said revival is a myth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember you responded to that one. And what was coming to my mind was was being a part of a community several years ago who were all about revival culture. And they were all about the fact that, you know, and I'm, I'm all for miracle science, wonders, all of this great mm-hmm. stuff, the supernatural. But I wasn't for a lot of the excessive and toxic ideas that tends to come with these things that we think that we think is necessary to, to quote unquote convince God to move. So so that self flagellation and you know that you need to kill your flesh and that's and that you need to beat this up or beat that down. And and what I what I found is that is that what I was being taught as truth was just someone someone else's ideas that that you couldn't really track and make sense of or grab hold on to. And 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 it was just a lot of times personal empire building, and so what started to happen is I, I for a season I just disconnected from church on the whole. Yeah. And uh, literally, if I wasn't given the microphone, if I wasn't for on a, a particular engagement when it was that I had the capacity to dictate what was going to happen, you couldn't find me in those spaces. And so I was just, I was just, you know, I was angry and I was frustrated because. I had major voices and major leaders that I looked up to as a mother or a father, which was a whole, just whole idea that you know, that this person is your is supposed to be the picture of a parent who is supposed to become in Christ, and that you should pretty much leave everything like Elijah did and follow Elijah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And all of that Fa- crazy. Well, that's a whole movement they call the fathering oh, yeah. movement as well. And the shep- and you remember, I don't know, remember the shepherding movement yeah, in the seventies kind of with yeah. mm-hmm. And so I, I, I was, I was. I was deeply neck deep and in, indoctrinated into that way of thinking. And I started to find out that the people that I was following, 
didn't really have the heart of God towards me in the first place. And that it was just a means in which it is that they can get me into indentured servitude, where it is that they can use me and pit me and prostitute me, however it serves their best. And my job was to be, quote, unquote, a son. And so when it was I started to get free of that, I started to realize that I was I was being used and misused and abused. Uh, I got angry. I got yeah. angry. And, and for years, and for years, a part of my healing process was just calling that ish out, saying what it was and identifying and calling them manipulative, calling it coercive, saying that it was toxic and that if you're going to be a part of that type of space and functioning in that fashion, you should not be received as a follower of Jesus Christ. But in fact, you are you are a danger to people. And so that's what happened. And then church leaders, you know, start to have opinions about me. And apparently they have conversations about me behind my back, but they're afraid to talk to me because, like I said, I am smart. Uh, I'm I'm not I'm cocky I'm not arrogant but I am cocky and if I know something to be the truth I'm not going to back down. Yeah, it sounds like and, while we 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 kind of connect so well and I'm drawn to what you're doing is the fact I mean that's very similar to what happened to me and uh and I think a lot of people listening too you know what I'm saying and they're they're eat some of them that that's happened to them or some of them they're going through this right now and yeah. there's things that they believe and experiences that they have but if they speak out about it they're going to be demonized they're going to be talked about behind their back there's something called ghosting you know in the church realm mm -hmm. where you just like you just kind of cut the person off and you don't talk to them or even tell them how anything. can two how can two walk together except they be agreed even though we take this script out of context uh you know we find how do you, how do, reason. i want i mm -hmm. want you to expound on that a little bit too because that's one that we always would 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 go on, and we would like cut people off because they agreed they believed something different. We did Christian rap for a long time, and like mm -hmm. uh, we would quit working with each other because we believed in signs and wonders, and then they became more of reformed theology, and they mm -hmm. were like, Some "No, Calvinists. we can't." They, they were Calvinists, and they said they they didn't want to be seen on stage with us anymore. Like people that we grew up with, and they just kind of veered off into something different you know, in you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. well, in the scriptures and we wouldn't be seen together, can two walk together lest they agree. And that that separated so many people. For me now, I'm like, when I read that scripture, it's like, can two walk together lest they agree? It's like, hold on, let's find what we can agree on and walk together in that. That's the well, that's what I get out of that now. Because I'm finding so well, much peace there. Well well here well, here are several things. Number one, within your own self you don't always agree. You, you live in, sometimes you live in cognitive dissonance. You disagree with some of the things that you find yourself internally conflicted because you're trying to reconcile two different things that you tend to believe. And, and it creates a kind of cognitive dissonance, you're conflicted. So what are you gonna do, separate from your own self? That's the first thing. Second thing, look at marriage. Mar in the marital relationship, if, if the basis of your connection with somebody is, 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 is agreement, <laughs> on, on everything you you're gonna have a very messed up marriage because i i, have, I don't know any i don't know any healthy couple who, who constantly agrees on any and everything it just doesn't work and so what happens is that and this is why i said what we'll do we'll find any passage of scripture take it out of context especially if it's if, if it's old testament we we, 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 we love especially those passages like malachi when a man Rob a God, yet you have robbed me a That was the enough. first one, bro. That that, that oh, waking a lot of people up, though, for real, because that's so easy to break down, man. God. And, and and just to break that passage down, the first thing is that that scripture had nothing to do with the general body. It was towards the priest who Dude, was I stealing found, the money. It, the, the, chap, the book is only four chapters, and all you got to do is read the beginning of each chapter, and he addresses it. Like, and uh, I was like, but, what the hell? Why are they reading these curses that were for other people and they're re putting them on us? And I want to tie that into mm -hmm. witchcraft, Harry Potter, spirituality. Watch out for the witches. Watch out for Calvin Witcher. He's a witch. You know, <laughs> the Christian witches. Um, There's more witchcraft being done in church ministry than Christian churches than there is in Wiccan covens, witch covens, man. There's some of the most darkest, craziest witchcraft going on when the pastors and leaders understand what those scriptures mean and they still continue mm -hmm. to teach it that same way because they can get money out of you. Witchcraft is manipulation. Whether you're manip whether you're manipulating matter and, and pulling things in and people. out and creating things, they're doing that under the pulpit and with the music and God and salvation and eternity at stake. Man, it's so so dark, bro. 
it is it is and um, you know i have an issue i i used to say i hate witchcraft but after meeting calvin which i'm like you know what i'm considering some of this stuff i'm going to sit down <laughs> and see what, where, where am i at because because do you mess with my theology mm-hmm. my issues with coercion my my, my issues with, with with intimidation my issues taking the free will and the power of people to make their own choices I think I think that is extraordinarily dangerous and toxic, I, I, more than anything else, and 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 that that's that's what I've seen done so many times. I know individuals who will who who will marry or will not marry a certain person because they're seeing a little prophesying and telling what God says. Oh my God! And, yeah, and, yeah I, I've seen. Or trying I've seen, to, I've I've seen what happens a lot. You've probably seen this too, the gay thing. We get a gay guy in. And we, hey, he's not gay no more. We prayed for him. He, he found delivered. Jesus. And they'll try to hurry up and marry them with another young woman who's looking for a husband. And like, here, mm-hmm. y'all get together. And they'll send them on dates. They'll even pay for their dinner. You know, they, hey, and they, they have this hookup. And like close friends of mine have almost gotten married and engaged with gay guys. Like that would have messed them up so bad to get into marriage a couple months, a year. And be like, hey, I'm still gay. Like you because know, what I'm, like part, I know y'all told me I wasn't, but those feelings never left. You know what I'm saying? And like, because the first thing we think is that, according to us, sexuality. Uh, first of all, I, I I find it interesting that this whole I only had in church culture, church um, homosexual lifestyle. I, and I've always asked the question. Well, no, not always, but recently I've been asked the question: What is a what is a heterosexual lifestyle, and what is a homosexual? <laughs> I said, I need, I need a clear mark. It's like, I can understand it's a Christian lifestyle because if it is such a fall of Jesus Christ and it, 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 and um, it's a new age lifestyle, it, because these, these beliefs and practice, these beliefs influence totally how you, how you, how you interact, how you function in everyday life. Uh, it, it shows up in your core values and your convictions or whatnot. You know, it's a gay lifestyle, but somebody wearing a rainbow colored flag and, and listening to I'm every woman or something along those lines, uh, or, you know, doing the bow 24-7. I, I don't know. No one has ever been able to ex- explain those ideas to me because her- heron is part of the problem that I help the church folk, and this is really what irritates me the most. We don't have a, we, we don't empower people within within uh, within the spiritual spaces that I've been in. We don't empower people to study, to think critically, and to do research. And you can, you can, perpetuate any idea that you want to perpetuate, especially if it doesn't go against mainstream culture. So for example, you talk about, about LGBTQ issues. If you live in a very patriarchal and misogynistic type of idea, um, system, all you have to do is paint a picture that, uh, uh, paint, a, paint a picture that perpetuates an idea that supports and affirms that type of um, my mental stronghold. And people will go with you with that. So that's why it is that we want to believe that, that, that homosexuality is a spirit and that gay is a spirit and that it's something that you can quote cast out. And that, you know, that's why it is that, they, and then it is we find different terms to define what we don't want to find. So somebody says that, you know, I'm not gay, I'm same sex attracted, SSA, which SSA simply equals gay. Um, you know, just like OSA, opposite sex attracted equals heterosexual. And we, we teach that you can lose these things or you can break this. This is about sex. And when, it's, when it has absolutely nothing to do with that, it's just an way in which someone has been made and constructed. And it goes back to, to them, to who it is that they are on a deeply psychological and even neurological level. Uh, but, but, but unfortunately, I found within, within church culture, we think that we could, I guess, do what pray, God did to do. Pray the gay <laughs> away. Could, pray it away. Yeah. Pray it away. And it never... It, it never works. I thought that for a long time. I mean, I'm in the Bible Belt, man, and we were charismatic. We think you, we, I mean, we're, you know, I, I, that was my truth. Only till recently, just, you know what I'm saying, several years ago that we like, you know, that, that spell get broken off of my life of that, you know, what gay people are and can be their friends, you know, just weird stuff, man. I had to come and, out and of then religion. Don't forget, yeah, and then don't forget, especially as a, I guess, and excuse the term that they would use as a white cisgender man. In other words, um, when you say cisgender, you're born as a man, and um, as well as whose who's hetero attract, whose who's natural attraction is to women. You grew up in a system that that in, that inherently thinks that how it is that you function that is not only normal, but that's what everyone else should do, and everyone else should live their lives. And so, whatever and whomever does not conform to that 
is automatically not only abnormal, but they are, it's, it's perversion. And um, it, uh, it's sad that we create these, we create these binary boxes, which is that we're expecting people to function in uh, because it creates oppression and, if, and it hinders creativity and innovation and the, the capacity for us to see the plurality of differences in terms of how God makes people how it is that they function, and I remember, um, I, I remember that the, the one of the first quote unquote uh, really, really toxic community I found, I found myself in was just because the senior leader, she does deliverance, and she was casting the gay out, and apparently she, she came to cast out of me, and um, I remember, I remember, uh, I was like 16 years old, and uh, being under the tent, and she doing all that stuff, taking all of our rubber into my gums, and doing all of this crazy stuff. I'm serious; it was a mess. Yeah, yeah and yeah. I promise you, I, I promise you, by the next time I was up testifying, I ain't gay no more. I'm delivered. I've seen you on that video. I'm not gay no more. <laughs> I am delivered. Delivered, and so you, you you sit in those spaces, and you and you follow follow what they believe and what they teach, and. But yet you find behind the scenes they're the biggest freaks. I mean, because Man. those type of communities, they tend to have so many people that that who are so sexually repressed that they start messing with each other, start doing a lot of crazy stuff. And, and the only way that they're able to kind of function well is to marry one another. And um, it, it's, it, it, it isn't healthy. Yeah. And it does, it's so, and it it's so weird people. because when they do it, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? Even if they get the caught God, or whatever, they still well, got a pulpit. They still got this kind of stuff, but they because they there's just they still have the anointing. people bamboozled or like under a spell that that, that they've created with that Cause, platform. Because you create because you created a dependent culture, where right? So people feel they can't function without you. Well, it was it was it was big with uh, what's his name? God rest his soul, but uh, Bishop Eddie okay. Long. Okay. Oh, Eddie Bishop Eddie Long, Long, yeah. You know. Yeah, but. And yeah, his, but, but, his, his leaders, you know, well, I guess he never came out, you know what I'm saying? Like, but his his leaders came out and said, even if he did do it, we'll still follow him. You know what I'm saying? Even if he was having sex with little boys, we'll still follow him. It was like, okay, this is crazy. And that wasn't yeah, just about but, being gay. That was about what messing with, you know what I'm saying, underage dudes, you know? Well, first of all, that situation, that's um, pedophilia and homosexuality are two, co two, co two completely different uh, ball games. But um, those are two different situations because because you were, because the whole issue of pedophilia it is about um, it's, it's predatory and being taken care of someone's innocent. It doesn't matter if it's a male or a female. Now, I, what I will say, like with that with that Eddie Long situation, and this is interestingly enough something that we've recently found out. More than likely, he wasn't the one that did anything. But what he was doing, because he was the most famous person, he was covering up for a lot of his other friends, allegedly. Who, who who were who 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 were leaders of smaller organizations, smaller bodies, and perhaps what was occurring is that he took the brunt of the beating, because he was the only person that could have been able been able to handle the payouts and deal with all of that different stuff. Uh, what what happens is that um, is is that when church leaders arrive at a certain level of prominence, because we build platforms all around them, it's kind of like Nebuchadnezzar building a, a building a an idol to themselves because uh, what tends to happen is that we, we create the type of places wherein church leaders become demigods and they can't afford to fall or fail because they're so much dependent upon their success. Because if you're leading an organization, let's say, for example, Bishop T.D. Jakes, who leads, um, and who leads the part of South in Dallas, Texas, that has about 30,000 members, and you have several hundred employees dependent upon you, and your name, your integrity, your character, your reputation has to be sterling. If it is that that becomes tarnished, what happens is that the people who support you, who pay and who undergird this organization, start withdrawing funding because this is a nonprofit entity. And if that occurs, then you have, then you lose people, and this whole system starts to crack and fall down, and it destroys, and and, uh, and really challenges the lives of individuals. And so we can't afford. Uh, unfortunately, the way that we do things, we can't afford for people to get into misery. If they do, we can't afford to really hold them accountable because the money and the cost of it is something that we're not prepared to really adjust to deal with. Yeah. You see that a lot, man. Um, yeah, and, and, you know, they're really good at, at set, setting up these structures and, and getting people to to believe in what they're doing. And that, there was a, a couple of seasons where we were like, the Lord used us to just be in 
a certain place to check people, man. Like mm-hmm. I'm, we're just nobodies, you know, carrying the anointing and uh, God will call you to check a big leader, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and doing all kind of weird stuff, but I'm, man, it, it comes out. And usually the ones, whether it's the, the homosexual stuff or pray the gay mm-hmm. away, I think one of the leaders of that movement just came out as gay. The guy who was like doing, what what do they call it? They, they have a name for it. Uh, Parental therapy. Yeah, but there, there's another another word they do it where it's actually, um, it's not called pray the gay away. That's what, a silly name, but. That's so uh, silly. Yeah, it's like that, but there's an actual name. I, I forgot what they call it. Anyway, it was one of the leaders of that movement, and he just came out as being gay. I mean, Ted Haggard, the, you know, all of these guys who are really you know, loud Chambers. about it. They're trying to hide. Alan Chambers, yeah, yeah. Alan Chambers who, who led Exodus International for, I think, more than 20-plus years. He um, he got up and he said and, and that that they have failed in their mission and that in 99.9% like of the cases, when is that individuals who came to them for help or conditioning or, or support, they found out that these uh, that these people have not did not experience any real change in sexual orientation, and they may have learned to deal with other other typical issues individuals who who on who on LGBTQ spectrum deal with just because because of society being so repressive and toxic towards the orientation, drug addiction, or and a lot they may of have promiscuity. But that has nothing to do with their sexual orientation. It's just because you you have you're having to hide it and uh, and not not being able to live in a healthy fashion. So whenever it is that people have to function in a repressive way, you're going to get them behaving in less than healthy healthy manners. And so he, he said that they failed. And so many of the founders, the people that, that, that supported these ideas, who, who pioneered and spearheaded this stuff, keep coming up, uh, coming out and saying that, you know, that this, this stuff doesn't work. And now you have the Bless Their Hearts, you have, Beth, you have Bethel Church in California, who has this whole movement, you know, um, talking about, about people who ain't gay no more, they're delivered. And it's, and it, it's, 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 it's toxic and it's, it's varying because what it does is that it continually gives false hope narratives and, and, and it, it, it promotes confusing message, conf- creates confusing messages that you have to put out. And uh, it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. The psychology tells you that the things that, we, that we're teaching and that we're supporting doesn't work. But when it comes to the whole issue of sex and the whole, the only thing that we think is healthy is missionary position between um, between between a husband and a wife, um, in as boring as way, way as possible. And interestingly enough, over the years, you find out that we once believed that sex, in and of itself, should if it did not produce an heir, if it did not um, include the possibility of a child, we yeah. it was thought that was considered sodomy. Yeah, and yeah, and uh, oral sex, like with your even with your spouse, like mm-hmm. with, they, they were church leaders. We were under like, no, 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 you don't. You don't even do that with your spot, like anything. Oh, like- I know, I, I know major church leaders who who <laughs> really do perpetuate that belief in this whole purity culture type of stuff. Yeah, you know that um that you know that they will tell you they're married and that they don't engage they don't engage in oral sex with each other because to do so would be ungodly. Yeah, and that's that's weird. The only time you should come together with your spouse is to have a child. That's yeah, so not, weird. But, but these, people... these are the pure, puritanical ideas, and yeah. and it, it 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 goes way back into issues that that the church always had. Um, even Saint Augustine, some of these guys, who who were great Christian reformers and fathers in the faith, had some pretty messed up ideas about sex. And I know one major church leader from back in the day, um, centuries ago, who who praised the idea of if it is that you married somebody. That, that they thought it was godly and, and Christ-like not to have sex with the person that you were married to. That that, that, that was the height of purity and height of commitment to Jesus Christ. No yeah. sexual intercourse and engagement and intimacy with your partner. Yeah. Um, what was the whole thing with um, the guy in Waco? Um, what's his name? Waco, Texas. Uh, David Koresh. He was oh, telling... Yeah, the, the cult leader uh, who had the the 
sounds eerily similar to some other people, but you <laughs> had the uh, divine revelation on uh, the seven seals and how they're going to be unlocked and what they are, you know, and all that kind of stuff mm. and started his own cult and commune and that kind of thing. But one of his things that he would, he would tell some of his followers who were married, like they came in married or they wanted to get married. He'd say abstinence and, um, he would have sex with their wives spouses. I believe that. Yeah. And he would do it to like, he would talk them in like, cause we're not supposed to do it, but I'm going to take on the role for you and do this for, and he would convince people like, okay, sure. It's like, well, these mm. folks are, they believe anything, man. It's scary, bro. I think that, I think there's, I, I think the scripture talks about it too. Just see what I'm saying? Be not many teachers, man. Be not many leaders is a harsher judgment. And you, you see why. Most people can't see it. Like, that's the whole witchcraft of it all. Like, the true dark witchcraft. Like, occult, bad stuff. Because Cause they, cause they got everybody fooled. Like, behind the scenes, they're telling you not to do it, but they're doing it. Like, that's where it comes thing, in. If you have real supernatural powers, you can, you can convince people to hold on to an idea because most people are not taught to discriminate between divine gifting and enablement of supernatural um, capability and whether it is that this person is simultaneously a healthy individual to deal with on the whole. And, you know, if, if it is that you work miracles, if you can heal the sick, you can raise the dead and you can, you can cast out devils, all of this stuff, that's, that, that doesn't mean that you are, you're not a liar that you're not deceptive, that you're not manipulative or coercive, because, well, the power doesn't come from you in the first place. You're the medium, you're the entity being utilized to release this, this capability. Now, you should walk with honor and integrity, so it is that you don't create, you don't lose credibility and cause a reproach to what it is that you're actually doing, and you don't damage people. But, 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 but like, let's say you, let's say you, you, you go into hospital, just so to speak, and people automatically, miraculously healed do, uh, do you know how much clout that creates for you in that moment of time and how much trust people are willing to place in you because they've not seen it before yeah and they're not open to that before and so you know even some of the great healing evangelists people like Catherine Coleman I love Catherine Coleman um, but but she, but a lot of the ways that she thought was messed up if you read if you yeah, if you then, read them, you, you, you have what 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 some of those were probably doing, um, and definitely what we see going on now with cameras mm -hmm. everywhere, uh, um, all these fake healings, or we do one f false healing, a plant even, and then the, you know people are excited, people are going to start giving and all that kind of stuff. There's been a lot of videos come out. I did a, I covered some of it. You probably seen it. It was like in Uganda or something like that, and uh, the yeah. lady who had the weathered arm. And uh, yeah. they prayed and poured water, and she was stretching it out, and it looked real. We, I mean, at first glance, I watched it, and I was like, "Man, a creative miracle!" Praise God! Like, I, because you mm -hmm. want it to be real, you know, you want that that book to be real. Um, and then we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't demand transparency for 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 credible things. You know, it's one thing if you see A. A. Allen and some of those guys who will literally invite real scientists to come. This, 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 come see this type of stuff. What's really occurring? And so, you know, it, it casts a reproach on the real. Because you see so much false stuff. Yeah. Well, that's with everything, though. They say that with, uh, you know, Christianity and, uh, you know, the Crusades and this. And they point out all the bad, which is the first thing people go to. And then we're talking about healings and miracles and signs and wonders. And we immediately go to the bad, you know. Hey, you seen that fake one? You know, and, and just seeing how I think I think you know, deep down there's probably like a shepherding heart there that we don't want the people to be lied to because we were lied mm -hmm. to. And we, you know, and, 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 and I would read the comments on those videos and people were like, praise God. And they were like in tears, the, there is power in Jesus name. But they didn't know that this woman was a plant. And there's other videos where they use the mm -hmm. same woman with the same arm who got healed in another church. Like I did a whole breakdown on it or whatever, but Man, it's so always sad. happened. Like I've even looked at like some of the big guys, uh, you know who David Hogan is? Yes, David and, Hogan. Uh, he's got all these crazy stories, similar stories, and you know, mm -hmm. people f raising the dead. He raised two hundred people from the dead, or whatever. And he's talking about limbs snapping back together, and just horns mm -hmm. coming out of people's heads, going back in, like crazy signs and wonders. And he tells these stories <clears throat> in such a way that it raises your faith. It raises, like, mm -hmm. you know. But there's really no proof there, and so there's been a lot of people who would do the plant thing to, to like justify it or even make up these stories to justify it because they're building your faith. 
I'm building your faith in God. And so <laughs> I can make these stories. I like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would say for like for me, I, I living here, this is one of the one, one of the benefits of living in the Caribbean because we, we, we tend not to have as much readily access to probably some of the, the benefits even medically that you see in the USA, as well as because we're, we're, uh, if, 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 you, if you are a black person and you, and, you, and, you, and you live in the West Indies, you're more so attuned and, and rooted in, in spirituality as opposed to typical Westerners who may live in a, in a first world country. And so I remember having a mentor who I would see, he would speak to the he would speak to the rain and it would start raining. And I would speak to the wind, no exaggeration, and I would see these things occur. But at the same time, that same person was trying to this was a man trying to manipulate and sleep with his with with with, with, with some of the young men that he would mentor. Not me, not me, but thank God. But was trying to do all this type of stuff. But my point is that, you know, there, there will always be false stuff, but but there, but the, I, I I've seen and I know the real, I know the real and I know individuals who do demonstrate the real. And I'm probably uh, as much of a pro- prophetic person as I am. I tend to be so, uh, and they tell me that I could be such a cynic, but I think I think it's my own safeguard because I don't want everyone to prepare. There's a lack of it though. There's a lack of it. Like there 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 needs to be that to be like a healthy. Um, medium and uh because mm-hmm. we've seen so much stuff fly and the people want it so much and that's why you mm-hmm. you create an atmosphere of expectancy because it's the placebo which placebo is is a good can be used for a good thing mm-hmm. people want it and you give them what they want you know what i'm saying and hopefully you're doing it for a, a good reason and and some people say it gets iffy when money's involved you know you get you mm-hmm. lying or whatever the case is to get them to give but we've been in so many services and stuff where people are just prophesying what just making stuff up that you heard them tell somebody last week, they got these words mm-hmm. and you know, there's always like this etiquette or default you go to give them dreams and visions, Lord, wake them up in the middle of the, you know, these weird mm-hmm. things. And I was a part of a, a church service where I was, um, I wanted the real, you know what I'm saying? We want the real, we long for it, you know? And the lady was just like prophesying book deals on everybody. She was like, you got a book in you. You got a book. People are crying. Uh, you know, everybody had a book in them. You know what I'm saying? And then everybody mm-hmm. had this. And she told the pastor that he was going to be riding on pr- planes and trains. And it was rhyming. They get so rhyming. Planes and trains are coming into your life. There's going to be a line coming out of the church all the way down mm-hmm. the block. And, and they're falling out in the glory of God. There's going to be a line. People are waiting to get in to hear the word of God because there's a shortage of the word of God. And he's crying and the <laughs> Holy spirit. And then like, they're going to be lined up to that, that store down the road. And they change churches like the next week. And they're always like, like my elders and stuff, the ones who led me, they were like, cause I would start calling this stuff out. Like, bro, you can't just be making this stuff up. That's mm-hmm. all you, if you're prophesying falsely, you're a false prophet. Y'all <laughs> it's like, well, it can, it can happen. You can't call it because one day that could still happen. Like there could be yeah. a line coming out of that church to this, you know, and they don't even um, go to that built. They're not even in that building and we let it fly. And it really hit me hard because like um, the scripture talks about when you're moving prophetically like that, that there's something we always leave out. And it's that somebody's supposed to be there judging mm-hmm. the matter. Hold on. What the hell are you talking about? You, the Lord told you these people got book deals and you know what I'm saying? Like somebody to kind of, that's kind of outside of it. Who's not like trying to hype it up. There's supposed to be a judge there when prophecy's going forth. And we don't, you'll never see somebody doing that and calling like the evangelist or the pastor or whoever. Hey, Oh, I don't think that was God, bro. You need to kind of reel it back. We don't do that here. You know what I'm saying? Unless it's going to be a big, we don't hold, yeah, we, we don't, we don't hold each other accountable. And I think a lot of, a lot of times what we consider the prophetic has been so, has been so, Hyped up as well as here and is here and here is an issue I found. A lot of a lot of people aren't happy with life on the whole and the reality that they live in. Yeah. And so because 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 they're not happy with the life, they want you just to come and say something to them to tell them that they're gonna skip the reality what what their life is like. So I remember when I was eight years old, a, a prophet came to my kid, came to the island and she said that I was going to be a prophet, I was gonna call to nations, I'll travel other nations. Yeah. 
at this juncture, I probably travel to four nations and um, preach in different states of the USA. It ain't that glamorous, to be quite honest. Uh, um, the fulfillment of what she's spoken over my life and things that have been declared, it's its nowhere as, as fun as some people would tend to think that it's going to be. And and uh, and what what happens is a lot of times people don't have wisdom to go with what is being spoken at simultaneously. I find that people tend to just want to be addicted to some fa- some fantasy idea about them being being something that they're not really they, they really aren't, and then they then they can't be happy with the reality of their own lives. Oh yeah. Yeah, can be happy with the reality of their own lives, and so they see prophecy as a means to, to give them a false sense of self, and to take them away from the reality of what it means to walk out, walk out the fulfillment of what has been spoken in their lives, and how that probably is going to be. And so for me, it means a lot of work. It means it means a lot of sacrifice and a lot of challenges. But I'm seeing it. I'm I'm walking in walking on things that have been spoken over me, but. It isn't some big fantasy idea, like somebody, like some people would think. Um, I don't have any big, big. How can I put it? There's no big flyers with my name on it, all over, all over, all over, all over social media and churches and whatnot. I'm kind of the, I'm kind of the John the Baptist being marked as, oh, he's he's an error. He's wounded. He's false. He's, don't don't listen to that guy. And so you know, I, the fact is, people just tend to tend not to have a realistic expectation. Sorry, you can hit a dog back in the outside. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. They tend they tend not to have a realistic expectation and then they just hate their lives. And so they see they see this as a momentary opportunity to get a, a sense of affirmation and validation about themselves, even if it isn't real. The weird thing is it's like you can make it real. Like any of those prophecies. Like mm. the book deal, even though that was BS, like somebody could like held on to that. She told mm. me, and I'm gonna write it down, and I'm gonna start writing tomorrow. Like, how many people you get prophesied to? You're gonna, the Lord's gonna wake you up at two or three in the morning, give you dreams and visions, give you songs, and give you mm-hmm. ideas, and you wake up and you just go back to sleep. Like, like if you but be- really believe that, you're like waiting to get woken up. You know what I'm saying? And, and you, then or you there's... can partner with it. It's, 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 a, it's an invitation. I think. I think a lot of time real prophecy is an invitation. Yeah. To a journey that that's going to require a change and a shift in who it is that you are, how you function. So people tend not to be interested in that. They tend to just want the, the momentary affirmation and not not the call to personal responsibility. And so yeah. I've found that that as I've grown, majority of what I've what, what I speak tends to bring about a greater sense of sobriety as opposed to people falling out. Yeah, we um, well, I was uh running the phone lines for a friend of mine who's a psychic that's her title and Mm -hmm. um i ran the phone lines on blog talk and i would take the callers and get their name and stuff but eventually they wanted me to start praying and they really liked my prayers and a lot of them Mm -hmm. you know weren't a part of church culture it was different for them for me to bless somebody and pray over them they could they could feel god you know when, when i prayed and stuff and uh um a lot of people they would call in for readings from the psychic and they just wanted to be told, like, they wanted somebody to agree with them, something where, where there's, like, something they already felt, and they just wanted a mm-hmm. quick fix. And, like, and then they would, the the lady would ask me, okay, Truth, what do you feel? I'm like, okay, you you want to, is he coming back? Oh, do you want him back? Like, you like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, do you want it? And I'm asking them, like, hold on, what do you want? Like. Because if you want it, there's things to do to make it happen, like to manifest it and, and, and to and get people, right. People are afraid of, of, of that reality. Because there's work. There's work involved to it. It's not like what bewitched. Do you, what do you actually want? Yeah, be, be clear, want, be concise. And if you want prayer, let's release it. Like, let's create it like in the spirit and in your mm-hmm. mind. Let's make a connection there if that's what you want, an idea, and we'll help you get on the right track and remove any obstacles. But like, what do you want? They're just calling in like, hey, tell me what I'm going to do with my life. Oh, I see you doing this. I see you doing that. You know what I'm saying? And that's what they, but they'll, but it's so weird. Cause like people to keep calling back like every week, wanting a, a prophecy or a psychic reading. Like, didn't we just give you a, give you some information last week. You want, I some want more you, I, I want, I want you to do, do, do for me what I should do for myself. Yeah, for sure. 
Yeah. And I, 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 people, ra- people would rather be manipulated and disempowered than it is that when things fall apart, they can blame you. Rather the pro- than yeah, the psychic was wrong or the preacher or whoever. Rather than, rather than saying, okay, I didn't expect this to happen and I took these risks and this situation occurred this way. Um, that's that's what that's what it is. That's what you, that's what it is. I just see it occur many times, and um, it's sad, but but it, but it isn't. But, it, but it's not. Uh, it's not surprising because the fact remains that, in in, in the day in the world in which it is that really, people have to make so many choices, and you uh, and you're taught even in school, you're indoctrinated and you are groomed to follow someone else's path. And you're not you're not taught to make to, to make decisions and be an empowered individual yourself. And so, I remember one time, like I told I told a mentor of mine, I said I have I said I have a I, I said I'm an independent thinker. And she told me that I had a vagabond spirit. That was another <laughs> thing that I told my head because of the fact that I didn't just accept what they say. When they said, I didn't just accept it as true. And I didn't affect, accept the fact that you found you found a passage of scripture to support it because I found out that just looking at scripture at, at face value doesn't mean that you're going to actually understand what it's what is the fact saying. So I'm 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 better because I had enough common sense to critically analyze what it is that they were perpetuating to me as true. Yeah. Um and, and there's a uh, a lot that comes with that and that you've experienced that I've experienced, mm-hmm. right? A lot of other people, um, which leads me to the, this understanding of the baptism of fire and in, in the charismatic movement. We know what the fire is. It's the fire. Hey, the you need the fire, fire on your life. You need the fire. Gun. Yeah, There's glory on your life. I'm moving, I'm, a- I'm moving closer into this baptism of fire, like which I love the fire of the anointing, the fire of his weighty glory presence, like the fire that's within, like a breath of fire. Like I love it all, but I'm really moving now to, to like understanding like the, the, the fire is the anointing of like trials and like let me set up these trials and these situations to see how you react, to make sure that you mm-hmm. really believe this stuff. And um and going through that, like, like you get the anointing when you're pressed, when you're going through situations, like when you have the, the, the oil, uh, it comes out of the, the olive when it's pressed and trampled and beat up and beat on. And then the, the oil comes out. So I, I, fe- I feel like there's like there's a connection with going through adversity or going through maybe what we would think is hardship or having a church's mm-hmm. gossip about you or pastors lie on you or people, you know, call you out your name and gossip behind your back. Like it, that does something to us, especially when we thought that that was family and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, mm-hmm. God is the author and finisher of our faith. And there's like a test and reasons that we kind of go through that so that you won't get, you won't get tickled when you got your name on a flyer and, and, and a, 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 a video goes viral. You know what I'm saying? You won't be moved by the applause and opinions of men. God's got to burn that out of you with that fire. Did you see a connection mm-hmm. there with like the fire, the baptism of fire and the anointing and going through these trials? Because I feel like even when it's like everything's against you and you don't, it seems like you don't have no way out and no reason to pray. When you tap in to the presence of God, when you begin to praise and worship, there's a whole new level of glory that's never left. Even though it feels far away, it feels like, man, I wish I could be the person I was years ago, the naive Christian or whatever. Like the the anointing and everything's still there. It's never left. It's even gotten stronger. Have you? Mm-hmm. Can you talk about well, that? Yeah. What what has happened? What has happened with me is that I found out that the process of life that I've walked through and the challenges that I've faced, what it did is that it made me a more mature individual. Um, because it matured me emotionally, even intellectually, I found out that the grace and the capacity I always had, that that, that seemed to have been unlocked. And so once with, with, with that being unlocked, then it flows in a more, a more notable and tangible fashion, whether it's on preaching, teaching, ministering to individuals, however, however it is. And I don't think... I don't think it's like quote unquote the anointing increases. I just think what it is that you already have, what you already have, that begins to flow in, in a greater fashion because, because you know, 
as a child, you have a, as a child, you have a certain measure of potential to do certain things to grow, uh, the capacity to mature into an adult who can be this strong individual, this strong man, this strong woman with these muscles and all of this, all of this capacity for movement. But it takes time and process for that to occur. And so the process of process of maturing me as an individual just meant that what I already possess, I'm more forthright with it. I'm a better steward of it, and it flows more more courageously and powerfully. And so I think that's what it is that I found began to happen. And you and you also take you take greatest you take a greater sense of responsibility for who it is that you are, what you possess, because you've you've endured enough life situations and circumstances that have a way of making you own, you own the reality of what you believe, what it is that you carry, and how it is that you function in the earth. And you have no need, no need to back down from it. I feel like uh, it gives you a natural empathy. You don't have to act mm-hmm. like you care. Like I, I always talk about how like the Lord told taught me how like not to gossip about people because I know what it feels like to have like congregations mm-hmm. gossiping about me or the pastor do, do a sermon about me to tell people to stay away like no, while no, you're so, in the congregation yeah oh yeah oh yeah and just say little sly way stuff where you got to get up and walk out and you know that kind of stuff and they mm-hmm. they knew what they were doing and stuff you know you know um but it's a natural empathy though like you really care for people who are going through it you know you really do you develop a natural empathy as well as you own yourself at a greater level, a greater sense of authenticity, because you you become more grounded grounded in yourself. Because it, it costs you just to be you. There there's a measure of sacrifice and a measure of of payment that you have to give to to own the reality of who it is that you have to live. In respects to that, when it is that is not necessarily something that others celebrate or that they affirm and validate as powerful and as necessary. Yeah. And so that's one of the things that I've found is that in my life journey, that what I've walked through, because I refuse to back down just from being myself and for how I see things, that there are some things I don't do to other people at the same time. It it makes you a greater sense, a greater person, the whole truth of what it is that you truly think and how you see people, how you see things, and you don't apologize for it because you mean what you meant. You said what you say. I tell people I don't lie. That's one of the things about me. I, I don't lie. I don't have an, I don't have a toleration for it. Um, I may I may function some self deception sometimes, but in terms of lying to people, that's not something I do, because it costs me too much just to tell the truth. And and when you know something to be true, and you can call out on others, you own it in yourself, and and you tend to be open to living towards it and once it is that you begin to function in this fashion it, it kind of draws even more supernatural experiences and it, it opens it opens the way it opens the portal up to, to sometimes to some greater encounters to to journeys and to pathways not just with god but you know, with, 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 with the unseen realm that other people tend not to walk because i've found that engaging uh, the, the realm of mysticism and the realm of the unseen requires openness and vulnerability as, as opposed to trying to function as a religious facade. Yeah. That stuff, um, that cost and it costs integrity. It costs you your life. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I, I have to handle it all with integrity. Like there's a sanctification process that, that is between me and the father, you know what I'm saying? And like, everything has to be good. Like, I mean, a lot of different things have to kind of add up for even for me to even want to pursue it. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm mm-hmm. not like walking what the scripture calls the highway to, of holiness, if I'm not on that, if I got hidden sin in my life or I got ulterior motives or I got, you know, whatever, you know, stuff going on, then I'm mm-hmm. I'm not really doing it. But uh, I, I like to kind of paint the picture between Simon the sorcerer and, uh, you know, uh, Peter and, and um, uh, Paul and those guys when they... Uh, you know, it was something that you could buy with money or something that you could learn or mm-hmm. whatever. But w- what they had came through the anointing, right? Or through this, this life laid down that it took them years to learn and they wanted it. He wanted it instantly and stuff. And there's there's those people who do that. Um, just like you were talking about how there's people who are so-called walking in signs and wonders or, or if they're real or not. But the scripture says that the... Uh, um, the, the giftings and callings come without repentance. So there mm-hmm. are people who can 
you know, be sleeping with many members in the congregation and still they have mm-hmm. this uh, charisma about them to move crowds and they know how to mm-hmm. hype, hype it up. They know what songs to play, whatever the case is, and it may, gives you the illusion. And, and they create an atmosphere for people, right, for people mm-hmm. to experience God, the supernatural or whatever. But for me, I, I really do feel like uh, in that working with the good side that you it doesn't go together. Like I think that those people are void of those experiences, like personally, uh, in their own prayer time. Maybe they don't even do that anymore. It's something that they learn. But for me, um, there's like integrity, love, and faith is the fuel for anything, any spiritual encounter for me. Absolutely, absolutely. What what hap- what you find out is that these individuals that that function in a way that's disingenuous, where it is that they're not connected with who it is they truly are presenting for side to the people. What tends to happen is that in, uh, on on uh, on a deep level, emotionally, they become very toxic. They get they have again the addictive behaviors to feed their soul, and they have to do different things to, to attempt to mitigate the the overwhelming conviction and, and disconnect between public pressure and performance and the reality of who it is that they are personally. I'll tell you an example. There is a well known, <clears throat> I'm presently a well known young millennial. It's known as a prophet, excuse me, <clears throat> with a huge following in the USA. Huge and, beard. Um, <laughs> and I, he, um, <laughs> trying to figure out who it he, is. <laughs> he, he's, he's, he's known. He's known for a lot of campuses now. Um, um, he, he he's known for white guy. Spurs, no black guy. Okay. okay. Or, or skinny clothes and. Um, oh, like he's model. dude. He's he's charismatic as hell. I know you talking about. Yeah. yeah. And and um. He nah, looks I'm, like he it, looks like Michael Westbrook, the Michael basketball, West, no, basketball player. My, I'm a, I'm a Michael, I'm Michael Michael Westbrook, the basketball player in the face. Yeah. Listen, listen. I, I'm Michael. I'm a, I'm a dude right. I can see who it is right now. Not I hair know. or anything. I know I'm thinking of the same guy. His his swag is off the chain. Yeah. Those jackets. Yeah. Are the, def, definitely, definitely, definitely. I know you're talking about in the face. And I knew them actually before they said they blew up. Um, I had them I had them in my country years ago, and I remember my friends were telling me how this same individual has had to go to, has had to go had to had to go into psych um, psychiatric um, hospital, for to get care just because of the stress of what it is that they what it is that they now had gained and had gained in terms of influence and so much cloud and pressure. Yeah. But how it is that they were functioning wasn't necessarily in deep connection who it is that they are as an individual because I saw their nature and temperament change so much over the years that it shocked me. And so publicly they're known as a very narcissistic, catty type of person, but privately, um, privately it, it did damage to their soul and it kind of comes out of their preaching and teaching style now more than ever. But my point is that there is a real price that you pay trying to function in the supernatural when it is disconnected from the reality of, of a healthy heart and a healthy soul uh, and you do it for yeah. you do it you do it at the expense of platform and influence and increased clout yeah um you lose you lose you lose the beauty of it and it becomes hollow there's um, uh, a lot of people can can get there and we see a lot of people get there not everybody mm-hmm. can maintain it that's the hard part getting there what they say your your giftings and abilities and stuff uh, can take you places that your character can. Your character can keep and, uh, you. and we see that happening. Like, and, and it's hard. It's hard. You know what I'm saying? It, but it's uh, it it it's uh, it, it comes from a place of being so powerful and so um, uh, anointed and charismatic or whatever you want to call it, or even just through through Christ, right? Like the legit the legit form. I'm mm-hmm. not even talking about coming up through manipulation, but the legit form of it. Um, you can walk in it, but you have to be so powerful in the spirit. Again, a prophet who can make it rain, a prophet who can open up mm-hmm. portals, pull out, pull things in and out, whatever. But you got to be broken. It comes from being broken. And that's one thing that I love about Benny Hinn, especially right he, now. Yeah, I, I, and listening to him cry, uh, cry on the pulpit and, and sob and, you know, want to have a happy ending. And you know what I'm saying? And just knowing he wants to, he really wants to hear, well done, my good and faithful mm-hmm. servant. And, showing you what he's did wrong and like hey look we i you know i i was teaching wrong and i've i'm convicted and i don't want 
grieve the Holy Spirit and I don't want him to be mad at me. You know what I'm saying? And like, that's a place that we have to stay in and, and what, whether he stayed there or whatever, but he's there now. And so that's something you got to mm-hmm. honor and respect, man, from like. I, I, I just, I just, I just wish he had done a whole lot earlier when, 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 during the height of his career, but I guess later, that better, better later than never. But yeah. um, I, I think here, here, here it is a real secret that I think a lot of people don't embrace. Simply having healthy relationships with people who love you outside of the context of what you can do. Having people who who really and truly do celebrate you as an individual, yeah, and right. and valuing relationship with you. Um, what, one of the things about me is that I'm blessed to have left friends who, who have, who are, have and are increasing in terms of their platforms and, and as far as of course even more so than me. But when we get together, we are the most horrible bunch of of dudes. <laughs> Hooligans. <laughs> Hilariously so. Like even with church stuff, we clown and we laugh. Even some of the things that we do, like what what the hell was you doing in that pulpit? Do get it together. What happens is that we, we we don't we don't do something that Jesus and even that even Jesus made sure that he did have. We don't have people around us who can touch us, who care for us, and who can be our friend, who can be there for us. Not 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 people who are enamored with your social platform yeah. and with with, with your with with. With, with with how much influence that you possess, you know, you need people. You need people around you who you can fart around. You need people who who can, who, <laughs> who can be around you when you smell sweaty and you don't look cute and yeah. that, that, uh, you don't have the preacher voice. Is on that everybody you though? Have... Should you should you like like tear down that wall with everybody? And there's some debate about that, you know. And uh, people have different opinions. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm a, I, hmm? go ahead, go ahead. I'm I, I'm of the view that uh, levels, I think there are levels of intimacy and engagement based upon people's, uh, that's why it is, first of all, you, should, you shouldn't wait till you get famous to try to build this type of stuff. You are along the along life's journey, you should be building healthy relationships. And those dynamics change. I'm guessing um, your spouse or your wife, your girlfriend, she should be, she's probably a whole lot closer, more intimate with you than perhaps me or somebody else. And though there are levels of connection, and I, I think I think that, first of all, that there should be a place and a space just for you and the, the divine, the supernatural, where no one else exists. But I also think that I think that you should be willing and open to connecting and engaging people who see you above and beyond what it is that you do and who will, and get this, who will still be with you whether or not you have a platform. Yeah, no, that's the whether big or not you, whether or not you're successful, whether or not you, whether or not you consider, um, you want to do this for the rest of your life. I have people who, who genuinely love me to such a degree that if I decide today, you know what, I'm not going to do this any longer. I don't <laughs> want to do this. I'm done with this. They're still my friends. Yeah. And they still care about me. I'm still with them because because you, because what, what should happen is that we should be building relationships that um that 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 with people that we love and that we, we care about above and beyond their performance yeah, and their career and their ministry platforms and all this other crazy stuff, um, you know, and <laughs> when you meet those people, you keep them around. And it's yeah. okay if you don't agree on something theologically and you don't always function the same way because you know what? Uh, one of the people that I love, uh, like let's say Carlton Pearson, when he started teaching on the gospel of inclusion, oh, yeah. um, I still love the fact that when, when you go to, uh, this is a mega church, it's called West Sunday Church of God in Christ, Bishop Charles Blake. Um, this huge mega church, you still see you still see Carl, Bishop Carlton Pesso sitting in the front row because him and the senior leader of that organization are tremendous friends. We are completely different pa- places in terms of way of thinking about something, but but that's not that's not that's not the crux of our relationship. We just love each other because all of this other stuff comes and goes. Yeah. I was it, that's that's kind of new to me. You know what I'm saying? I say new. It's se- several years now, but for the most part, it was like. Oh, you! Oh, you play the piano? Okay, yeah. Uh, we need a piano player. Oh, you sang? Oh my God, have you heard? Have you seen him play the guitar? Oh my God, he can move a crowd. You know what I'm saying? And, and they put you in the church realm. They they put you somewhere. And then once you stop doing it, hey, the Lord just put on my heart. I'm not really going to be uh, playing any music right now. You just now. don't want to do it any longer. Yeah, exactly. You know, it ain't got to be nothing <laughs> about the Lord. I'm just, uh, you don't doing it, but you don't have anything to offer. You. You you go get back in the crowd. Now you're just another face mm-hmm. in the crowd because you don't have anything to offer them anymore. 
Uh, whether you're a preacher, where you're a Christian rapper like I was, an evangelist and stuff, and like mm -hmm. you have, I had so many people who would invite me out to their church, and I mean, we would even like, I mean, we would, it was, it felt, it felt closer. Like I would be on the phone. It, what what really blew me when I went through my stuff was the fact that like some of these people that, that would invite me out to, for ministry, and uh, we'd be on the phone talking, and we would go to hang up. And I remember the first time this happened. We're going to be talking to him on the phone. He's like, all right, brother. All right, man. Well, uh, I love you, man. And, you know, they said that. So for you, you yeah. have to return. Okay, man. I love you too. And I was like, all right, man, I love you too. You don't have to tell another man that and then like mm -hmm. to really mean it. Like, okay, I, I, I love that brother. That's, that's one of, that's one of us. You know what I'm saying? And he's put his neck out there for me and we're, you know, we'll do anything and uh, we're, we're, we'll have family. And then once you kind of, the whole ministry and I'm not a minister anymore, or at least what they would call a minister. And then you don't get any mm -hmm. more phone calls. I was like, I thought you said you love me, dude. Like That's how you treat the people you love. Like, like, what's up? Uh, how do you treat your enemies, man? Oh my God. You treat the people <laughs> you love, but you find that like, like Christendom and church culture, like that's just cross the board. And you don't find that out until you've kind of been in and then been pulled out. And you say, oh, we don't. Yeah, you're you're done. And what really got me and opened my eyes was the fact that we were all like gung ho about ministry and outreach. We want to convert people. We need new converts. And we go into the hood. We go into the ghettos and we play music and we'd rap and we try to convert people and bring them to church and all that stuff. So we were always looking for new people to convert and to bring in but we didn't give a damn about the people who were bleeding who were beside us and like christianity is like the one religion man that kills its wounded are you, you bleeding bro the wolves are well, coming all, and they just kill him and get a new one. Oh, we got these new kids man they cut like hold on what about the people we already got mm -hmm. we need to take care of and help them get through their shit you know and Come on. Well, first of all, that that's not real conversion. What you're talking about, that's 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 like bad sales and marketing. Um, it, it's manip manipulation and <laughs> it's manipulation a lot of times because. Uh, Are you talking uh, about the ghetto uh, stuff, like going into the hood to, for outreach? Um, what, what 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 we call outreach is here's 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 why I find it manipulative, because when I when I when I look into the New Testament church and the Book of Acts, you didn't see, you don't see what we call evangelism. Now, you do see evangelists may go into the territory and preach and whatnot, but the focus of the church was not evangelism. It was about community. And what, what is it is one thing to go into a space to preach to a bunch of people, and then it is that, you know, you don't take the time to engage them, to develop them, and to uh, learn to do them. life with them. It's another thing. Because you don't care. Like, like deep, you don't care. You They're need just, just another number. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't care. Really, you don't care. You're not going to. They're not a real disciple. Sometimes what, what is, you, 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 do, you do find some of those people who care, though. There's some of those people out there, right? I, 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 a lot of times, I think it's 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 this whole hell brimstone and fire because we figure as if the world's going to end tomorrow, so we need to get as much people in. And we, we, don't, we don't necessarily have to go through the real process of developing and discipling and knowing and engaging and imparting and relating and doing life for these individuals. Because to me... Being a follower of Jesus Christ, that's an entire, that's an entire different way of operation, of thinking, of philosophy with a with a whole different future. And it radically changes someone's life. And and for you to, and I think it's unfair for us to show up in people's people's lives and say that you need to make this change tonight. And you need to do this tonight. And, you, and then it is that you're not willing to want to walk with these people, want to stay with these people, don't don't want to get into to, to their stuff. And to engage engage with these folk, you know, people say, "Well, I'm not an evangelist." Well, because the, the, <laughs> they they're just being honest. They don't give a damn. Like, they don't care. Yeah, and I'm so, not called know, it that. I was just yes, I you think, are. If you like to an extent, you know. Yeah, you, you because you, you I think for sure. Like for example, if we get the spiritual gifts, that's that's definitely evangelists would do something like that. They have a grace for that. I, I I will not deny it, and I'm not against it. But I think what has to happen is that. A lot of times within 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 the church, we just we we have to teach people to really relate to other individuals, and then if it is that you find somebody and they make a decision sincerely that they want to follow Jesus and that they want they want to grow in this thing, then you should be willing to commit yourself to know them, to engage them, to relate to them, to be with them. And I have I have several individuals. I call my kids. I, I call them my babies. I call them boys. They're brats. 
uh, the grown adults, the grown adults all have their, have their different lives and, and, and all of that stuff. But uh, for me, my purpose on being with them is for me to to get to get to know them, to engage them, to be with them in their reality and to do my best to help them and to help them walk upright, to be strong and to and to live amazing lives because that's that that's what it that, that's what it was all about. I was called to relationship. I wasn't called to be a superstar. Yeah. And um and you know and tell us that we change what else what will start happening so we continue to have communities filled with a bunch of people who function with an orphan mentality who don't have anyone who don't have anyone willing to be there in their space and in their and in their face to engage them to have them walk through the realities of life and i think what sucks is that most of us if we tell the truth that has been one of the things that we lacked um because what if in your journey uh while it was that you, your mind was shifting uh, in terms of spirituality theology and stuff that you re, you legitimately still had some great men and women in the, uh, in the, of God who may be in church leaders or whatnot, who are saying, okay, I don't know where you're going with this, but we love you too much to let you go in it alone. And whatever you think, you still matter to us and you still always have a space and place with us. And we're listening to you. We're talking with you. You make whatever decision you want to make, but I'm with you. I'm with you. I don't have to be on your podcast on this stuff, but I'm with you as a person. It, it, it makes for a different type of um, experience and different type of faith because I think that's why we lose so many people just because of the fact that not that they disagree with us but the fact that we we, we forsook somebody just because we did, they didn't choose the way that we may have chosen and they don't see it how it is that we see it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's about doing life, doing life mm-hmm. with the person, right? And uh, that takes time, that takes energy, that takes effort. Um, mm-hmm. and, and you're talking about like uh, having those people in your life that you uh, you can be open, you can be honest with and be be um, uh, genuine and authentic with. Um, I think that should be everybody like we should be open. Like there's this weird um, somebody posted a status and there's like some church members wanted to come to this apostle's house or whatever. And um, he said, no, you can't let the people get too close to you because then they'll see you as another, as they'll an get ordinary. Familiar. You, you, yeah, they'll get familiar. Sure and, 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 and I know, right? But there's a weird truth to that. But it's like, I think we need to destroy that weird truth that's there because it's not right. Like you just said, you is ordinary. Like, you know what I'm saying? Have you, I, I've, I've felt that in the past or whatever, even if it's maybe in my head, but you kind of build yourself up not either you do it or the people do it by proxy because you have a platform mm-hmm. and you have followers or whatever and they or you're a spiritual person like Benny Hinn like I would I, you know to see Benny Hinn, Benny Hinn and, and Steve Brock smoking the hookah you know what I'm saying yes. and and Perry Stone like I seen that video like that like oh my god that wasn't real that was CGI you know to see that these guys are regular people who tell jokes who play tr- pranks on one another like that that kills the magic for a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? Because they have you built up on this, whether it's a spiritual well, the dem- pedestal. I guess it's the demigod, demigod ideology that 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 we have to, we have to make you more than human because we cannot we cannot see you being as normal as us because God doesn't use people like us. Clearly, he he uses people like you, and it's a sad fact. And one of the things I always do is that if I mentor someone, if I take time to invest into people, I make sure they get to know me. Uh, it doesn't mean that I tell them any and everything about me. I, I think yeah. that's stupid. But, yeah. I, but, but I think it's important that not only we're touchable and reachable, but that we understand that our faith is incarnational. It's, it's incarnational theology. It's, it's, it's the fact that God came and dwelt among us, and that if we're, if we're children of God, it has to be possible for people to come and, uh, and dwell among us. So, you know, I don't go around with, uh, um, how, what do we call you? Are you prophet, apostle, Alexio, Lex. That's who I am. The gift and the grace of my life works works with or without a talent. It doesn't matter to me. Furthermore, furthermore, uh, getting to know me should, shouldn't, shouldn't the reason that it may cause you to lose respect is because you have a false sense of what I'm supposed to be doing and how I should be living. Or the simple fact remains is that I, I show myself to be a person that doesn't live in a respectable fashion. 
Otherwise, because if you live in a respectable fashion, you should be okay with people getting to know you. And you should want those who work, especially those who labor with you, who spend a lot of who work with you, they should be able to have the best testimony about you. And what's pathetic is that I've found a lot of times people who work closest with Christian leaders, their testimony of them is that they're horrible. <laughs> I know. And I could. I remember the first time I heard that. Now, this was probably, man, I want to say 2003, 2004 in that that area but it, it was when Juanita Bynum was the big thing and I really oh I really enjoyed Jesus. her stuff and I had a buddy of mine who was a cameraman for TBM and he would and he had to film her and she's all bossing people around get me a water do this do that mm-hmm. and the cameras were cut on hello everyone the word of God is coming to you and the cameras were coming she's bossing people around and cussing people yeah. he was telling me that and i and I, I i had cognitive dissonance because i watched her with td jakes i watched her her teaching i watched her cry and pray for mm-hmm. people like there's no way that 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 can go together so i had cognitive dis. i was like no way it's not the same person you you're talking about someone else you know but really she's a regular woman who you know has a bad day a or nasty, bossy, attitude. nasty attitude nasty I, attitude i, I, I couldn't believe it attitude. But it was the first yeah. time it was like, okay, it makes you, <laughs> but I, you know, cause we have them on this, this fake pedestal, man, cause it's TV and they got makeup on and, you know, and it's filmed we, and we, it's we, edited. We, 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 we think we, we, we fall belief to the deception that, that automatically these are, are great people. I love, um, I love Christian leaders who have, who have met, who, 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 especially the ones who may have a lot of a big name and not a notoriety, who genuinely are still kind people. Because I think, especially as pressure increases and, not, and opportunities and influence increases, it, it has the opportunity to really expose and magnify who it is that you really are at, at, at the core. And there have been times that you have men, have leaders um, who have, I guess I'll give you one example. I used to go to El Rey Asus, Guillermo Maldonado, big thing in Spanish community. Now, Papa G, I would say he got a bit of a short fuse sometimes, but one of the things that I liked about him is that he's that one of the reasons people loved him and loved that church. Uh, even if you don't, even if I didn't agree with a lot of things that he that he taught, he was he was just the coolest guy to walk up to, like walking through the church and just hey, Papa G, yo, what's up? And he's like, what's up? Where you been? I'm in the Bahamas. You need to come. You need to stay here. Mm-hmm. Don't go back home. You need to stay here. And, just genuinely, just a great guy. And when, when you meet men and women who are just who, who are just genuinely and sincerely like that, it's refreshing because it's nice to see people uh, who who have great influence and have and have a lot of clout, who are still who are still touchable and tangible, and who are still you know just good people because because that's because that's what you should be like, especially if you're gonna have this level of influence. We shouldn't be elevating you if it is such a nasty. A narcissistic. Yeah, and that's something that the the lights kind of blind people from because they don't get to see that. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, I, I feel like we need to always let them see it, man. I think there's something attractive. I think there's something uh, a beauty and uh, and a truth and even a power in just being mm-hmm. authentic, right? Being up myself. Like, that hey. I can inbox you and say hey, and you say hey back. Well, not just um, that, because <laughs> I get because I get so many of those that if I don't say hey back, then I am, you know, <laughs> I'm a snob uh, yeah, or whatever. But yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, but I just just in general, just about just just somebody who can who can who still say oh thank you. Or, oh no, you know, I try to I try to answer to all I try to answer all emails and, and messages and things like mm-hmm. that. But um, what's well, the fact that if you don't, then you are a snob or you you don't yeah, really yeah, get... that, yeah that, that that definitely is not a fair assessment, but. But it's still it's still cool sometimes when it is that you see individuals who um, even if they have like speaking speaking engagements and because it's, you you get to tell a lot about about a preacher after they finish preaching uh, um how it is that they act towards people and uh, before or and after I've seen like the divas who don't want to talk to anybody but uh, I'm, I remember one gentleman I, I came to the Bahamas one time and I think I sang I sang on the music the music team for that night and. He, he says, knocked out into the back. And he only comes out at a certain point, comes out, does what he has to do. Don't touch him. And when he's done, he walks right out of out of the facility, out, out of the out of that space and goes straight back into his room because he wants to stay in that zone of the anointing. I'm like, bro, bro, bro I'm going to need you to break it down. 
and ain't that serious. It, 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 it's you're okay. Not, no, I've seen some of that weird. You're not supposed to touch them. I mean, even Kevin Gates is really weird. I don't know if you know Kevin Gates. I know him. He's so funny. Like people touching him, and he's wiping their. He'll wipe his arm. He's 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 Muslim, kind of like Muslim Christian type deal, Ooh. but it's silly. But um, there's a lot of that. I mean, I've seen little bitty churches like go on those weird ego power trips to where the pastor's reading in his study hall, and there's two dudes with guns at the at the door, and I want to shake his hand because they had me to come out to to speak. And after service, he's in the study. They say he's reading, he's studying and reading the word of God. And they wouldn't let me in. And they were like standing there by, and this is probably a church of 30 people. This isn't, <laughs> this isn't 30,000. Like, you know what I I'm saying? Like, you. Oh, okay. All right. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> I believe you. And they wonder why the ministries don't grow. And what happens is that, you know, that because they even create a culture that over time, that, that, that it's, <laughs> But it's normal for people in positions of influence and power to be tangible and touch. Touching that's why you don't see it throughout the entire community, because they don't they, they 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 don't increase it. And so they so they build they build spaces where it is that now they're secondary tail leaders of prima donnas, uh, feel as if they're better than other people, don't uh, aren't reachable, you can't engage them, you can't talk to them. It, it's it's sad. And um, it's, it's pathetic, but what, ha- what starts happening is that people eventually leave. And I think what, what I'm seeing occurring here within the church today is that our love and our flair and our attention towards that type of stuff, especially amongst my generation, that is really decreasing because we're not interested in it. We're not interested in the games and, and we're, not, we're not given towards the pretense and all of this extra stuff because... Um, I, you, want, you, want, you want to follow somebody and you want, you want to learn from someone who is tangible, who's reachable, who isn't perfect, but who models what is what 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 it should be like to want to follow Jesus or what it should be like to want to um, engage engage in the divine work. I think I think that's what we're looking for. And when we find that those are the people that we that that we that we lean to as opposed to individuals who are simply great for the sound bite and who are simply, you know, church sexy. Yeah, I mean, there's a, it's weird though, like because you don't see it. There's a disconnect with this, you know, like putting people on these uh, pedestals, and we've only seen one side of them. And then when we see some people, when they see the other side, they're shocked. Or there's this thing, this notion to tell you, don't meet the people that you look up to, don't meet your idols, because you're gonna be let down, and you're probably gonna start like. There's a lot of truth to that. Like I met people that I put up on pedestals, even when I started getting into the spiritual movement, right? I got into spiritual hip hop and I'm listening Mm -hmm. to some of these artists and they're breaking down astral travel. They're breaking down and they're doing it in their music. They're telling you how to ascend to the seventh heavens and how to Mm -hmm. communicate with the angelic beings and the Elohim and taking ayahuasca and journeying through the clouds. And I mean, they're on this crazy far out beautiful stuff that I was reading and I'm trying to embody like I'm reading books about mm-hmm. this and then they're rapping about it and I got the chance to meet them in their filthy language or cursing all the time and they don't even <laughs> they don't even do any of that stuff like I would even ask them questions like hey man like when you meditate like what what is it that you see like what is it what are some of the experiences like oh I don't meditate like bro you got a whole album about how you meditate mm-hmm. in the sand and I'm like so for me, like, and there was a bunch of other guys like that. And I was like, oh, wow, the buzz kill. Because I had in my mind, oh, that's just, this just music. We study that stuff, but we don't really, we don't not really, we don't really practice. And it was a bunch of them that I was like, oh, my God, I wish I wouldn't have met you. Now I can't listen to your music the same. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not the fact that you don't, you're not, you're not who you say you are. I guess there's a, and, and you know, there's a uh, um, entertainment value to it or fantasy value or something like that but again like there's a lot of people and i feel like that too sometimes many people meet me and they're like oh man i thought you were gonna pray with me i thought we were gonna meditate no we finna lay on the couch and watch netflix like (laughs) exactly (laughs) we're not doing nothing we're gonna have a couple beers we're hanging out we're i'm a regular person but this the weird dichotomy that i think by Mm -hmm. being authentic and having this conversation and putting yourself out there is the fact that i'm both of those people you know what i'm saying i like to meditate i like yeah, this to this is one of one of the reasons that, but i like to play video games and all that kind of stuff as well you know and that's just a spiritual uh this is one of the reasons why you will see even like whether it's on social media or when individuals meet me they they 
the, the, the expectation of me, especially in person, uh, them engaging me and singing in the pulpit usually shocks them by the time I take the microphone and, and they see this type of shift because of the fact that I'm, I'm, I'm intentional about getting, letting people like me, getting opportunity to meet me, what I'm like, how I think, how I function. And then uh, if you can, then if you can handle that, then it is, that I, then you can deal with the rest of me. Then it is that I'll expose you to, to some of these deeper things that I hold on to, these convictions, revelation, all of that other great stuff. But <clears throat> excuse me, I want you to get to know me and um, find me refreshing and, uh, and if you like me and if you can engage me, then it is that I think you should be on my platform. Then it is I want to be on your platform because, you know, 99% of what we do isn't in front of the masses. It's, it's, it's doing real life. So people should want it. You should want people to know you. And then they can decide from then when they well, when have to bound you as a person. Then they say, okay, then it is that we want you to teach us. You know, that's what I love with Jesus. You, the, 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 when they met him, they just follow him and they spend time with him. And then it was that the eyes were exposed. Okay, exposed to the fact that he truly was the son of God. Yeah. We, we, we avoid people getting too close to us and getting to know us. And we're not intentional a lot of times of, of, of laying out how it is that we think, how it was on our minds. That's why even on my page, a lot of times my friends tell me, say, you, you can't be doing this. You know, you, you're preaching the gospel, international speaking, you can't online this. I'm like, look, this is what I am. Yeah. 24 seven. I want a glass of wine. I love Chinese food and Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> I'm going to talk a bunch of foolishness. I'm a clown. I'm going, I'm going to crack up and everything of like that, because to me, that those are, those are parts of myself that I'm not willing to trade away to, to live up to this facade that people want to hold and believe about me. I'm not your fantasy. Um, you let, let you meet the real me and let you decide from then on how it is it you're going to function. I, I recently started getting on someone that may, that may possibly become a, a more a deeper relational dynamic. And they want to come by my apartment just to meet my person. We were talking, I was just chilling. And I said, my apartment is horrible right now. They said, good, finally, I get to see, let me see what exactly what you're like. And let's let, let let's have real engagement with who it is that we are as individuals, because uh, at some point we have to put, we, we have to put aside the pretense and we have to allow people the opportunity to get to know the real us. And from that place, then it is that they should have respect for our spirituality and all the other great stuff that we do. I'm with it, man. I'm with it. And those are the ones who really, they're really there, you know, but mm -hmm. they, you know, they can get both, they can get both, man. They can get this work and they can get, you know, we can do spiritual stuff together. <laughs> like it's just, a, you know, people just be around you and especially too, like, like, especially like being on the internet and stuff and doing a podcast and like you do so much spiritual stuff and studies. Like I want friends to hang out with. So like when it comes to like meeting some people in the community, like I just want to hang out, man. I don't even want to, you know, I, like people think they're going to meet you and you're going to talk about, you know, all this deep spiritual stuff and aliens or whatever the case. You're going to talk about all kind of, I don't even want to talk about this stuff. Like, and even when I talk about it, I'm going to talk about, I talk about it in such a clown type of fashion. And so such a sacrilegious way. And just whatever, because, because these aren't, these are, but you still believe, but you still believe you, you'll make fun of the stuff that even you believe in. Right. Yeah. I, I, I think it's funny. Yeah. I, I mean, as much as I talk about some of these disposable top topics, I'd I be the same one that bash them the most. <laughs> and you leave people dumbfounded. Hold on. How are you How are you bashing an armor bearer when you got two armor bearers under you? Uh, and you talk about all this craziness, you know. I, I'd, be ta I'd be talking about, you know, how it is that, how it is that they treat armor bearers like church slaves, all this stuff. And then I'll also talk about the fact that when I went to recent, recent speaking engagement, and they had these adjutants and a big old jeep set aside for me, and when, and I was too happy, and that when I came back to NASA, I was looking. I said, "Where are my adjutants? I, I need I need somebody to pick me up and show for me around." <laughs> like, because for me, I, I think I think there are a lot of great things that I've seen in, in spiritual movements, even within the church, Christian church. I just think sometimes we take stuff and we and we take it too far, and it becomes messed up and manipulative. And so I clown on the foolishness. But I'll all, but but I won't throw away the baby with the bathwater. Yeah. I don't think that's fair. Yeah, there was a. I did a. Um, I had. I have this character that I do, and I. Oh, uh, does, does your audience know who armor bearers are? Armor bearers. 
Yeah, you uh, mean tell them about half of them. <laughs> half of them. You can't. We can like uh, some of them if they grew up in church. Cause they, uh, not even grew up in church. Like it's church. Uh, it's just, and charismatic. Yeah, it's charismatic. Church, like yeah. so. Like the the armor bearer from what I've seen. And I know you probably know a lot more, but because I've only seen a couple. <laughs> <laughs> but they uh, a lot of times they 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 are the trigger man. A lot of times they'll hold guns and, and kind of they're like the pastor's bodyguard, if you will. Mm-hmm. They uh, let's see, they they. It kind of goes back to uh, carrying the armor for for someone like you know mm-hmm. going into battle or for King David or whatever. But in in the churches I've seen, they they have these specific roles that they do. You have to walk the pastor's wife to and from the platform. So mm-hmm. as the, and you sit next to the pastor. You're like his right hand man. Um, right hand woman. You, you, get you, them get them the water. Get them the water. Make sure that they have water. Get the Bible. Um, yeah, and uh, and, and I'm sure there's a lot of other weird stuff, but that was mainly it. You're like his right hand man, like you're always seen with him, and uh, the personal intercessor. You pray for them. You cover the man and the woman of God. The man, the man okay. of God. <laughs> Whoa, man, yeah. Um, I had this skit that I did because uh, it was a character, it was a uh, character that I made called Brother Wayne. Okay, mm. and he's like a Southern, a hellfire brimstone preacher. And, um, and I did a skit. I would just do these rants where I would get in the character and record it. And, uh, and one was about an armor bearer position that we're opening up in the church and we're looking for candidates. Mm. And it's like, we can't pay you. We ain't got no money. We can't pay you, but we'll pick you up and bring you to church. I want to tell you one thing. If you're going to be an armor bearer, you're going to be the bearer of bad news. I'm going to need you to go tell the bass player to turn down. He turns up too loud. I need you to tell him to, to turn it down. I'm going to need you to get the pastor's water because he'll be parched. When the pastor's parched, it's your job to bring him to water. I need you to go after after every sermon. I need you to go under the, the pews and I need you to get the gum from under the pews. I need you to clean mm. up all the gum. I need you to walk the children to children's church and back. I need you to do all this so we can't pay you but the war but God will reward you. He got a he'll pay you. He could pay mm. you better than I can. I tell you that <clears throat> word of God. <laughs> yep. It's it's a little bit different when you can see me, but people thought that that was a real person. Cause, you know, mm-hmm. I'll do that voice, and uh, but the armor bearer thing is is hilarious. It is, it it, it is. I grew up in church, and and I've seen oh, I've seen a lot of that. I used to armor bearer for some people. I, I did all that. I did all that stuff. You felt it was an honor. Uh, you felt it was an honor. <laughs> you know, and I'll say this: there have been times I've assisted, like my friends who've had to preach and different things like that, and it's been really cool to work with them um, and what they were doing. And we just did it because it was hilarious. It was it was just funny to, to do, especially some of the circles that we're in. And we 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 we, we don't take those things seriously, but to, like we were we were we were secretly cracking up because we didn't know how to play the roles and how to act like how it is that the other folk were there because they thought it was such a spiritual thing to do. And um, it's just funny. And I know, I know there's there's literally and there there are literally, literally academies and. And training programs, courses. And institutions. <laughs> yes, yes, they are. It's called. Oh, I'm sure there are online courses. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, no, no. In person, like, like yeah. you can get you can become certified uh, in terms of in terms of in terms of in terms of the agency of doing the work of an armor bearer and whatnot. And you know, um, a lot of times it's just good hospitality, but a lot of times, a lot of times it's, it's it's excessive, and they'll find any type of scripture to to support the these. Toxic ways of doing stuff. Oh yeah, like everything and rolls so, off of the pastor, and it's on on you, and you got it. It's almost like a maybe even like the whipping and you're boy. The, you're the hush the guy. You're, you're, the, you're, you're the hush guy. So you know who the pastor, who the singing leader is sleeping with, and if they if they're having the down to affairs and stuff like that, is your job to cover mm. the man of God. Oh, have you uh have you seen uh you know who Marjo Gortner is? No, I've the, never heard the, the name. The young preacher. There's some videos on YouTube. He was a baby preacher. He was like child preacher like three four years old he he mm. he led his first wedding at four years old and uh <laughs> it was back in like the 70s and or 60s and 70s and he was a uh, a big name and they traveled around and they let him preach and they would do tent revivals mm. and he was a little little baby they let him preach and back in the day it was big but um you haven't seen that documentary okay it's he, called he, uh, I mean, he, he, it was he the guy i think um I think I uh, know it was kind of black and white. Or it was kind of old yeah. film where it is that or with him with this shirtless and um, um, with all the money around him in the bed and stuff like that. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, I we, seen a portion of it. 
Yeah, we got. I I I've seen that online and um eventually bought the DVD, the whole DVD, and watched the whole thing. You can get it, mm-hmm. but yeah, that was an interesting one just to show you that again the giftings and calling or without repentance. It was an honorable thing what he did to make that documentary though, because that was like his last hoorah and he's like i want to show you what these pastors do and i'm done with this i just don't feel right about it it's all mm-hmm. i know to do my parents trained me in this i tried to go work a, a construction job i can't do it i'm not cut out for that i'm an entertainer mm-hmm. this is what i do so he okay. left that and showed you behind the scenes he's smoking cigarettes smoking weed tell you how mm-hmm. he approaches women on the airplane to sleep with in every city that he mm-hmm. goes to. And he gave you these like, well, you can't, you got to make sure it's not a, a member from the church. Cause they'll tell on you. You got to find somebody who ain't, who ain't going mm-hmm. to the event, you know? And he had all of this stuff laid out, man. It was very interesting, but, um, you know, you know what I'm saying? He could still move a crowd and people are still trembling mm-hmm. under the anointing and crying. I think and that's why I'm glad. Ghost. That's why I'm glad I have my, my bachelor's degrees in management and that I'm doing more courses and further myself ed- educationally be- because for me preaching, I want to do this for the rest of my life, but I want to do it because I believe in it and I believe in what I'm sharing, not because I am dependent upon an audience to keep my lights on. Um, because a lot of times that pressure is, that pressure is what pushes people into performing in a way that's disingenuous and that, that is disconnected from what they truly believe. Yeah. And um, that's when it become, becomes a lot of times manipulative because I've seen sincere individuals who over time, because of the fact that they became they became leaders of local assemblies or they gain fame and you know, and all of that increase, they have to behave in a certain way. And it's sad and they may not even really believe it. I mean, and oh, yeah. do damage he to didn't anymore. Soul. He didn't believe it. Yeah. But that was his job. He didn't know what to do it. His parents raised him in that. Like that's kind of what well, he went I've, to school said, for, you know. I've had friends. I've had friends who, who left high school, and went quote unquote full time into ministry. And I know one young man, who now, he is living abroad with his husband, but he was a quote unquote, known as a prophet in the city, um, where I lived. And you know he worked. He served full time in his church. And those the those damn people ne- nearly drove him crazy. But, uh, and so, and he gave them so many years of his youth and that now he's just trying to, I guess, kind of rebuild his life and find his way forward. Find, find, finding his way forward and to do things better just for himself. And um, he just didn't, didn't necessarily do that now, but the reason he's doing it now is because um, his sacrifice may have been sincere, but it was naive. And someone took advantage and they take years of their life, which is one of the reasons why I speak out against a lot of manipulation and coercion because people people sincerely buy into this stuff and in buying into it, they position themselves up to be taken advantage of, to be controlled and to be and to have their lives destroyed by someone else who who, who took advantage of their sincere uh, passion and ambition. Yeah, my... um. We got a comment here from uh, the Flying Penguins. Uh, mm. He says uh, their identity is often, often is what they do and how they perform instead of in Christ. Um, mm. You're known for for something, and you, anytime you bring change, though, you know people expect a certain thing, and you switch it up on them, you know. But I think that if like, I think there's a safety there with being authentic. If he was to come out of the jump street, maybe start something else, maybe you know, some other, maybe start another religion or a spiritual practice. He would say, Hey, this is mm-hmm. what I do. I like to drop acid. Uh, I don't really, believe, I like to put on shows or whatever. Um, he, 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 you know, left all of that. Didn't believe anymore and became an actor. He wanted mm-hmm. to, and he loved entertaining people. Like he loved putting on a show, but it's like, hold on. This is uh, I'm not, I'm not authentic. I'm not who you guys think I am. But so again, mm-hmm. again, like I don't want nobody to, think I'm something that I'm not right. I want to, I want you to know like what you see is what you get, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and not be, you know, one, I say one way, one day and one day another, but there's this, you know, it kind of comes with the territory though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, we're not going to do everything in 20, a 24 hour window or everything that I, mm-hmm. I we enjoy or whatever the case is. But cause like, if you're in the light, man, you, they can't like the enemy has nothing against you. So hold on, you didn't know that? I, I talk freely about that. That's you. Mm. You didn't know about that. I, 
I'm open. <laughs> you didn't know. Exactly. It's on you. That ain't on me hiding it. No, I'm just, listen, what you want to, you know, where you don't agree with. And the weird thing is, again, because that's, um, people are drawn to that. Mm. How vulnerable you are. And, and the reason they are, because in religion, you can't be that. You have to wear them. You yeah, have to play the hypocrite. The because you're living up, you, you have to live up to these ideas that are inconsistent with who it is that you are because we built a platform and we created a space wherein there is not a respect for the truth. There's, there, there, there's really, really more so a commitment to one man's ideas rather than the diversity that, can, that should come about as a result of having different people who are on different journeys and uh, with, with God and trying to find their way. And so... What happens is what what ha what happens is that you have to set you have to set it up in such a way that people can feel okay with it. That's one of the things we loved about Jesus. You know, you 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 can say exactly what you thought. I mean, Peter felt as if he could walk up to Jesus and say, "You're not you're not going." Well, he was like wanting he wanted them to because nobody else would. He's like, "Man, who do you who do you say that I am? Like, what what do people say about me? Like." Be open, man. Don't hold it back because exactly. you're scared what I'm going to do. <laughs> we love you, Lord. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and so, and so this, so this, so this, so this, so this, these facades don't really work. And so, and it makes for poor life. It makes for poor ministry. It makes for poor spiritual journeys and poor horrible relationships. Do, do you still have and, that for people, though? Because for me, even still, though, it, like, it kills the magic. It's a fake magic, right? It's not real. It's a facade. But again, the whole Benny Hinn or anybody you look up as being really spiritual. No, I mean, I mean I, maybe maybe there's levels of integrity. You know what I'm saying? You, I don't think you can compromise integrity. But but just being a human is is you know. I, I have spent some from my childhood. I was surrounded by like, like like influential individuals within the Christian community from my childhood, and they would stay by my grandmother's house when they would come to the island. And when I, when I became a teenager and lived in Nassau, I was still surrounded by a lot of influential people. And so that's how it's always been for me. So I really don't walk around with false expectations. And the people that you even see me praise and speak well about, it is because I have such a love for their humanity. I have such, I, I so appreciate who it is that they are as an individual and how it is that they seek to function in the reality of everyday life that that does something for me and that, that it, it for me it authenticates the reality of their spirituality what it is that they're preaching and teaching because i know that it's it's connected to who it is that they are as a person and how it is that they function and so because i see that connection then it is i can trust them and so i've seen major major individuals you know one of my a preacher who I really, really, I, I still love it to some degree, but like Dr. Cindy Trim, um, there's a video that I actually posted years ago that has more than 2 million followers. She literally prays in a building and about like 7,000 people just drop. Like literally, I can send it to you right now. I, like they literally just drop. Now they added some graphics to it with some glittery stuff, but but literally, they, just, they literally just drop. And so, you know, there's it's kind of hard to make some things up. How it is that you can, how it is that you can get that many people to just do stuff like that? You know, um, it is possible, but I've been in gatherings with people like her who, when you walk past them, there is without you even intending for it, there is this, there is this ethereal presence, this tangible, this this tangible aura that they carry that that's almost electric. And it, it's and it, it's nothing that 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 is planned or is facade. But uh, what I celebrate more about than anything else about them is when I can hear people who work with them, who speak well of them as an individual, who say that this person is hilarious, that they're really kind and that they have fun. I remember when, one of the things I enjoyed was when a friend of mine told me that she says, that says Dr. Trim likes cocktails. So when she goes to hotels, one of the first things that she will do is that she'll go to the bar and she'll get herself a cocktail. This is a little preacher for thousands and thousands of people yeah. on a consistent basis. And she's having Kill a cocktail. witness. You know, <laughs> I'm just chilling. <laughs> like I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I have, I have, um, I know, I have a mentor who, and it's recorded, who predicted this whole September 11th situation. Who has, um, who spoke about a lot of these, a lot of things that occurred before they actually happened. And um, I think they still even have that stuff on record with her. But she is the funniest person in the world. Like legitimately, when we talk, we, we're not talking about the things that she's spoken of or told. Um, 
We're just talk, we're talking about the realities of everyday life that she's dealing with, especially as a middle-aged woman. And if you want to, if you want to get into her mind with some of these things, she's more than open. But if it's integrated into the reality of who she is, and I think those are the type of people we need to embrace, people who who are normal, and still you can see that what it is that they preach and teach and what it is that they speak about, it's integrated into how it is that they live their lives, because that makes them trustworthy. Yeah. Yeah, that's good, man. I'm I'm with it. Integrity, uh, relationships, mm-hmm. doing just doing life together, really. Absolutely. You, you can find out. I think uh, Flying Penguin uh, kind of agrees with you. He said that that's a great test to see uh, the way they treat the, the <laughs> servers, the people who work for them. What do they oh, say yeah. about them? You know, to Absolutely. ask the employees. You know. And, yeah, people who work. Yeah, people who work with me will always tell me that I'm petty, that not in a bad way, but that I'm sarcastic and that I'm a clown. And that, but I, but that I care for people. That I will follow up with them. How you're doing? And what? Sincerely, just who it is that you are, because you don't have, don't believe the hype about you, because God doesn't. And uh, the worst thing you can do is fall in love, fall in love with people's perceptions of you, as opposed to um, embracing the truth of who it is that you are. Um, right here at the end, man. Let's. Uh, I want to talk. Ask you about any of your. Uh, angelic or supernatural encounters as okay. well. No problem. And then you talked about the spirit realm and you mentioned the other beings, right? Um, that's what mm-hmm. I talk about in this book. A lot of the uh, others I get to talk about tulpas and shadow people and elemental First of all, spirits. I love how thick the book is. I like thick books. Oh, yeah. So, uh, I, I it's love got thick pictures books. too, though. Oh, well, I'm uh, down with it too. I mean, I, I, I kind of cover, it's an overview book. Mm. fasting to rid oneself of spirits and it talks about the spiritual implications but it gets into like the physical implications or whatever of of uh mm-hmm. fasting and gorging on meats and foods and stuff i mean I, they cover a lot but a lot of different uh things and i show you biblical examples for a lot of this stuff like that we never heard about ghosts and spirits and mist and you know, ele- elementals, like all of that kind of stuff, like mentioned of in the mm-hmm. Bible, communing with the dead mentioned of in the Bible, like in a good way, like, you know, that Jesus did it and stuff like crazy out of this stuff. That's not normal. Maybe it's becoming more normal as we talk about it. I feel like it's divine revelation, but the more I hang out on on the internet, I see other people vocalizing stuff that I kind of stepped out in divination, you know, stuff like that in the Bible. Um, other people are being vocal about it kind of a, uh, together which is really really cool um so for you man um and let's just i don't there's a lot of dreams and visions and, and moving and chills and a lot of that stuff that you can't yeah, see yeah I, I'm just, man, I've, I, I've, I've had my full of stuff of dreams and visions and, and, uh, and, and yeah. i know we we we, we might have even mention this when we was with calvin that night before we went live what we're talking about like people who had that real power like and i'll say this that the real power the supernatural and all that stuff's good right but when something crosses over, that's what I want to know about, man. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had an entity where you could see him and other people could see him? Not just you, because I got friends mm-hmm. like, oh, man, I see angels in here, bro. You know, I have those guys. But it's like, hold on. I want to see him, too. Tell him to make an apparition. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got, there's angels over you. There's glory on you. I see it. Like, hold on. Why mm-hmm. can't we all see it? You know, we hear about these signs and wonders of, of, of uh, angel feathers or uh, rubies falling out of the sky. and mm-hmm. But has any of that stuff ever crossed over? Like an angel stepped into this mm-hmm. reality, a demon manifest and run down the hallway? Like any of that kind of stuff, man? Like where you, everyone what, saw what, it or something? No, what, what I have seen, um, pretty much actually, I, I think when, when I was a kid, um, when I was younger, probably before I really got into my teen years, those were the times when, when personally I would have a lot of saying, I would have like dreams and supernatural encounters that I could not explain. And, and I'm hearing voices. I remember, um, I'm, especially by the time I reached, reached my teen years, because one of the challenges of being in the Caribbean culture is that you there is this underlying supernatural type of energy and experiences that, that, that my people tend to get into. Uh, not all good, not all bad. But I remembered that uh, what would happen with me is that um, I was what was considered a student Christian movement president at my high school. And we started, we were, fat, we were fatured with revival. We wanted this great move of God, things to occur. And we, what we didn't realize is that 
apparently there had been real supernatural uh, individuals who had um, who 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 was aware of some of the things that we were doing, the way we were praying and we were pushing. And what, what, when you start to create a type of climate in a particular space, what, what can occur is that individuals who are, who are, for, who have other powers and are, are against that type of stuff, they can become aware of it, and, and it draws attention. And I remembered that. I remember what began to happen is that me and the young lady who was my vice president, we would literally not be able to sleep some days because we were terrorized in our dreams, and. <clears throat> I would see all of these dark forces running across my room and my bed would shake. It was an ex it was a really exhaustive time, I remember it. And I remember that one of one one of the experiences is that we were in uh we, we were outside having a service and I saw a lady who was who who, who was who came to where we were, but she but we were separated by a fence. Uh, campus for where she was, and I tell you no lie, she she looks up and she points to one of the individuals who was on my team, the music team, points to her, and this young lady automatically drops to the floor, and starts convulsing, convulsing in like in a full like seizure, not 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 even, not 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 like, not a seizure, but in full demonic manifestation, like she 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 she, she is literally like, like a snake on the ground. And acting and behaving in that fashion, and I remembered. Um, well, thankfully, my my principal was actually a real Christian woman. At the point in time, when she comes down, she lays her hands on her and she commands that power to leave. And within a few minutes, that young lady comes right down. What began to occur with me, though, is that is that more so than say engaging, engaging so, um, a lot of angelic beings and stuff like that. I've, I've, a lot of times it was probably more so in dreams for me than anything else. What started to happen is I just had this capacity, to, an, an increased capacity to know how to speak to people, to recognize things about them that I couldn't explain, that I just knew, that I could say this about them. And, I, and to this day, I still just get people, get them um, um, uh, this, this, this intelligence about uh, what it is that, that an individual has the possibility and capacity to accomplish what it was that they were gifted at. And I would tell people things that they, that only them and God knew that they had just said to him that morning or private conversations that they had with their friends. I tend to do things, set aside to do things along those lines. And so really I, my, my experience wasn't more, of, wasn't more of what you call a seer type of, type of reality, more so it was an intuitive empathic type of experience to this day that um, uh, I will go into a church building and I will know, I, to this, I really don't tend to, I tend not to know what I'm going to say when I step into the environment is almost if I'm able to start putting two and two together. This is what they need to hear. This is what's going on here. This is the experiences yeah. and this is what is needful for them to move forward. Uh, so that's how it tends to work with me. And uh, as opposed to, um, oppose, as opposed to probably a lot of dreams and, uh, encounters because I wasn't in that type of environment very much. Um, I stayed away from them, to be quite honest, because those people tend to be so crazy. Uh, <laughs> it, you, you, you have to, you have, it takes a lot of discipline and you have to know how to disciple individuals who are like that. I mean, you have a lot of them in one space. It can become extra uh, unnecessary and imbalanced in an unhealthy fashion. Yeah. And so, and so I, I tend to I tend to have stayed in, the, in 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 environments. I tend to thrive in spaces that, interestingly enough, not like me, where I'm the enigma. And by being in those spaces, I'm able to introduce different ideas and different practices, and 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 be able to utilize that's that part of my spirituality more so than any anything else. What? Um, let me ask you this. I got two things I want to ask you, but let me ask you this first. So. Um, mm -hmm. did you ever feel the feel it in your body, like whether it was for healing or what the Lord was wanting you to do? Oh yeah, I yeah. this is and this is this is where what will come for me is that I will like I will move and I I think I at some point I probably need to, I, I I need to speak to somebody who probably have a better understanding. I think it's called it's kinesthetic for me. Like I will move in a certain way, and when I'm walking and moving, then it is automatically I know information. I understand certain things. I comprehend what's happening in an individual's life, or 
I will hear their voice and I'll be able to tell them what giftings that they have. I will, I, I will, I will get near them or, or, or not even in a conversation, just get around them and recognize certain things. I just, I, I, I would just be able to say this, 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 this and about you. Because it felt as if that their presence that, that extends beyond the context of who it is that they were physically, that reality, once I enter into it, I'm able, I'm able to comprehend. I'm, I'm able to have discernment. I'm able to speak to what's happening with them or what's going on in their life and who it is that they are. And so you know, that's one of the things. Um, usually healings, um, I have, I, I've grown a leg out one time. Um, healings tend, 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 tend to have not been my area of specialty. I tell people, if, I, if, I, if I'm sick, I, I'm screwed. I got to go take, get medication. or call my other friends who move, move and that type of stuff. But what I have, what I found was that I have this, um, like you said, I'm very eloquent, this revelatory capacity and this ability to unfold people. Um, I just 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 pulled them, and just recently I remember I went to uh, on a speaking engagement trip, and uh, one of the one of the individuals over there, I her assistant, I stopped her and I said, "Hey, is such a person available?" She said, "Sure." I said, "I would like to speak to her for one second. The young lady comes out, and I'm telling her about the conversation that they just had. This happens to be some of the conversation they just had, and she is in tears." It's because I'm validating and affirming to her the fact that she's not crazy about what she's thinking about doing. And so those so that's 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 the norm. That that, that that's the norm for me. Just this the, the this this capacity for wisdom and for information. Um wisdom especially has has really been a major thing for me. Yeah. That's good. <clears throat> there was a a lot of times when I was traveling to churches to minister and stuff, there would be things that would happen in our in my body, like uh, mm -hmm. like my heart would start hurting. I feel like I'm having a heart attack or real pain in my back. Like I get in a car, we head to a service, and I can't move my back, and I'm like, oh Lord. And it's like the Lord would like let me feel it before I got there, and I would mm -hmm. I'd say, okay, Lord, I will be obedient and ask who needs this healing in their back, right? And then the pain would go away. And then when I got there, I said, I don't want to move any further. You know, when we took over the service and, and people would come forth and <clears throat> there were some times where I would be in, in um, and we'd be in worship in a in congregation and mm -hmm. I would go deaf in one ear. And first thing we'll have, I start rebuking the enemy. Devil, you let my ear go. Jesus name. I'm healed of the Lord. I'm glad. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't, wouldn't work. My hear, my, I couldn't hear anything. And so I said, okay, I know what this is, you know, and I go to the pastor and say, Hey, I feel like I got a word of knowledge for somebody, uh, who needs, you mm -hmm. know, healing in their, in their left ear. Uh, can I have permission? He said, yeah, after this song, go up there and I'll go up there and call it out. And somebody come forth who can't hear and pray for them. And a divine miracle happens. They're able to hear out of their ear, just being obedient. Then I can hear out of mine. Right. Um, mm. those weird pains that go and being in services and all of a sudden your neck, I can't move my neck. What's what, what I got going on, you know? And then first you start like rebuking it. You think it's the devil trying to get you. Like for, for some reason, that's the first thing I've always went to. And I know a lot of yeah. people do. I was like, hold on, let me just speak this out. Does anybody have a neck pain, neck injury that you need healing for? And hey, I went to the doctor today because of my neck. And they said, I got some stuff going on. We got, I got mm -hmm. a wreck. And, oh, I, the Lord wants to heal you. Can we pray for you? Sure. And then the Holy Spirit shows up and touches that person and even just creates an encounter for other things to move prophetically with the person. So yeah. you feel it in your body. It's kind of, I mean, all that stuff's scary. I know you like talking to people and you can probably do, do you think that it's some of it would you call like, you could say mind reading, but like, you know what they're thinking. Like you're talking to them, but you like, you're getting like other stuff while you're talking to them. You can feel them judging you maybe like a lot of, stuff like that well, like you're talking hey how you doing hey oh you watch the and you're like there's other stuff being like going on back and forth behind the scenes just yeah. what they really think about you and whatnot yeah, yeah that, that 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 happens sometimes usually i'm not as attuned to it because uh well, here, well look, i'll put this way, i'll be honest if i find that someone has a less than honorable viewpoint of me and they're not going to tell me i'm going to ensure that in your dealing with me i'm going to be as much myself as possible so that i piss you off because uh, if you're around me, I, I have I, I have a low tolerance for facades. So since you don't want to tell me what you really think, okay, you're going to meet me, Alexa, Alexa, you're going to meet that Leo side, that, that, that July, 
25th, which is my birthday, that Leo part of me likes to come out and, and come to the forefront. Like, come on, come on. So this is what you really think. And I know what you really think. I don't know. We, we ain't going to pretend to be nice when you, when you don't have anything to do with me. We, we, at some point, I'm, we're going to push on these buttons so we can come. Let's just, let's just lay it out for what it really is. So I like to do that. And, you know, when it is that, um, when it is that I'm around people and I can see that, you know, they are so suspicious or they're very cynical. What I will say that I won't share a lot of my treasures. I won't share a lot of things that I believe because I'm not, I don't cast spells for smart people mm-hmm. who are disrespectful regarding it. And, you know, it's one thing if you don't understand and you want to hear my thoughts and, and you sincerely, you, even if you disagree, you, you, should, you can be sincere about um, hearing someone else's journey. It's another thing if it is that you're a pessimist and you're really just wanting to nitpick and tear apart what I hold on to. Then it is if I see that, then screw you. And I'll I got no you. time for people like that. No. Nah. Not with the internet, man. You know what I'm saying? Like we can, you, you can, your vibe attracts your tribe. There's no reason mm-hmm. to be bullied and try to prove, tr- prove your like, you know what I'm saying? Validate yourself around unsuspecting people. Hey, you don't like me? Join the Join the line. There's a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? You don't believe me? I don't want, like, I don't expect you to believe me. You had to have been there. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wouldn't mm-hmm. believe me either, and that's good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just, that you didn't just take my word for it or whatever the case is. But, you know, integrity and all that stuff, I think it, it validates a lot of stuff too. Um, is there any um, uh, spiritual practices? Because I know you say you venture out a little bit. You're a little bit more open. Is there any spiritual practices that you... I'm, I'm a lot open. <laughs> That you do that, like, uh, we may be surprised about whether it's, like, any interactions with angels or calling on other entities by name or uh, burning sage or, you know, plant medicine. Is there anything that's, like, out of the box that you do that's just kind of, like, near and dear to your heart to kind of tap into the spirit realm or anything like that? Believe it or not, um, I don't don't know if this is a spiritual practice, but what I do do a lot is that I study... um, and I listen to streams of thinking and and perspectives that are that are probably that, that really do contradict, um, especially contemporary Christian thought. And I love to I love to spend as much time looking into say different religions and different different ways just ways just different ways of, of experiencing life. I, I I enjoy it. And I any love, any, um, any people by name like that's really what, like, one of Recently, one of my friends, um, he is a LGBTQ advocate, and he introduced me to a woman. Um, she's really a social voice more so than anything else. Her name is Bell Hooks. Okay. And I'm listening to her as well as I, I signed up for them. I was, I've been doing this online course on transgenders, uh, on transgenders, because usually if I have a burden about something, a particular group of people, I need to go look into it and see what's going on with me in there. And... Um, what I what I will do as much as possible, I will because I'm a very relational individual, I find that talking to people um, who who are across the spectrum um, outside of my particular sphere, that, that for me is a practice I, I do I engage in as much as possible. And because it helps me to experience and to hear their reality of what what, what it's like for them. And it, that opens me up more than anything else. Because um, I'm not. I'm not much for meditation because just sitting down, you're talking to you for like two hours. I mean, all my legs are moving because I'm a little ADD, and so I, I'm always usually on the move. And so <laughs> that's why it's so uh, powerful, man. <laughs> Go against your nature. <laughs> I know, right? And so, and so, uh, I I thrive on sitting sitting with people, talking to someone like you or, Cal- or Calvin Richard or one of my other fr- or having friends and who I've even spoken for who are into metaphysics. And um, and different different ways of, of of functioning. That for me does it does it for, so for me. I'm into all that stuff too. Like I study a lot of different philosophies, and for mm-hmm. me, it validates. I don't know if you want to say the Bible. We could say the Bible. It validates my faith. It's another. It's expounding. Like I have I have these mm-hmm. others in, in metaphysics and maybe scientists or people who are you know take more of a scientific approach and, or someone who's into Qigong mm-hmm. or someone who's into Reiki or whatever the case is like they're like 
expounding from another position things that we already believe and we already practice and they they're they're approaching it from a different perspective but they Mm -hmm. give us some light that we're not able to see because whether it's about the bible or certain passages and ways to break it down because we've Mm -hmm. been told it's this way but we listen to a mystic or someone who's into another philosophy does it does it reinforce your faith a little bit more make it a little bit more magical and 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 it it humbles me it humbles me because it it, it helps me to recognize it's that 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 uh, number one god god has the capacity to reach people straight across the spectrum (laughs) that that don't necessarily fall into your your typical evangelical way of operation Mm -hmm. and it, it 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 makes me realize that um that I, I don't have the monopoly on God. I don't have the monopoly on spirituality. <laughs> you ain't got it all figured out yet. Yeah, no. You don't have the you don't have it the, the monopoly on speaking in tongues or discerning of spirits and how that works. It's awesome to hear other people talk about it from a whole nother perspective. Be like, hold on. You're talking about discernment of spirits. You don't they don't use exactly. that word, you know. But, but they you, but have a premonition, it, um, a premonition, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> a, a quickening, what we would call it, you know? Yeah, it's different, I, you know, I love it's beautiful. it. Beautiful. Uh, um, I, I love, I absolutely love it. And, you know, um, those, are, those are the things, those are the things that I value because it teaches me, teaches me to, to, to once again, not just to consider, not just consider study, but also to recognize that, that in, that I should that I should be humble even with what I present. Mm-hmm. That I don't that I don't get the place and the space to attack someone else who may see things differently from me, or, or or to think as if I'm the only voice there, mm-hmm. that I'm the only one that, that's perceiving what's what's on the mind or the heart of God, and that God 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 does not access throughout throughout the length and breadth of the universe, yeah. reaching the people and to and to speak to them and to empower them. Yeah. Um being more inclusive and I think it opens you up. Like everybody has to kind of cross that threshold who, especially Mm -hmm. if you're a part of religion, because you, you're, you're told that God only speaks this way or God Mm -hmm. only speaks through Christians. Was that person born again? Who gave you that information? You know, like they speak in tongues of what denomination. (laughs) Yeah. Were they fast? Is it a woman? Uh Yeah. So like once you cross that threshold, um, consciously, like you're open for God to speak to you through anything. You know what I'm saying? And there's levels to it. And cause some, cause God can speak to you through a homeless man. You're like, Oh, this is some crazy ass homeless man. Like he doesn't even mm-hmm. know he doesn't even have his life together. You know, you judge it through that. What, what we, what's the word we used a while ago? The uh, cognitive dissonance kicks in. Uh, mm-hmm. God could never speak through a Muslim. God can never speak through the Bhagavad Gita, bro, bro. The Bhagavad Gita, the, the Quran, bro. God is not in the Quran, bro. You know, you have these weird, things and you're like hold on i'm and he and god will do god will speak to you through the quran just because you said that he can't mm-hmm. you don't speak to the quran god well, let me show you pick it up you know what i'm saying like anything like the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof man and we hear his voice he speaks through many different my sheep know my voice and the strangers they will not follow but it, his voice speaks through so many different dialects it sounds the same mm-hmm. it's this it's familiar it's we heard his voice before we were formed in our mother's womb it's a familiar sound but it speaks through so many different facets man and uh there's a there's a, a, a i guess you would call it a proverb a hindu proverb that says you can if you can't see god in all then you can't see god at all mm, that's so, okay god where are you in this you know, what do you have for me in this? And man, being so in tune and so close with the father's voice that there's a uh, 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 man, you are privy to so much more. And it op- it unfolds because you thought you had it figured out. And like, oh, my God, mm-hmm. back to the drawing board. But it makes it more fun, dude, you know, because you're looking for him to it's speak everywhere. Yeah. And he's longing to speak. He's longing for you to to listen. He'll speak through the movies. He'll speak through your friends. He'll speak through whatever. Like, and but it's usually be the like, ones God. you think that he's not, which is the cool thing. And sometimes it'd be like, God, shut up. I'm, I'm, I'm not in the mood today. <laughs> I need a break. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's absolutely true. Sure, man. It's good stuff. Well, bro, I, uh, I appreciate this this interview, man, this hangout session, bro. We got to do it more. Thank you. Absolutely. And, uh, Thank you for making me the first one of, of, of oh, 2020. Oh, for sure. For sure, that. yeah. We got, got it in, man. First one of 2020. Starting off right. 
Um, what do you have to plug, man? Your your Facebook? Do you have any any a website? Anything where people can check out more about you? I mean, your your Facebook is popping. Like you, you stay on a roll. I love it. it. Keeps me laughing. And like you said, the memes were the best though. The cat meme. Did you make um, a lot of those memes, or would you? Yeah, I did. I made. I all think of them. a lot of those memes went viral, bro. I think other people were taking them and re-uploading them because I'm finding all these other people like with the same meme. I'm like, hold on, I think it almost tagged you. I was like, I think Elixir made this. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, people, people, people steal your stuff, and so probably in 2020, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start tagging my, putting my name and stuff on it. <laughs> but yeah, sure. um, I have, I'm, 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 I'll be traveling to the USA some more this year. I'll be in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, this is where it's just, just follow me, check out my page, follow me, and if you inbox me, I will respond as soon as possible. I'm in Alabama, bro, not too far. Oh, uh, Fort Lauderdale. It's a little ways, but not too far. <laughs> listen, listen. You have to understand. I live in Nassau. My owl is twenty-one by seven. Oh wow! So, yeah, I, it's small. So, like, even when I go to the USA, and when this, oh, it's just going to take take two hours again. I'm like, excuse me, two hours to get where? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina this year. I'm Cincinnati, Ohio. Should be there this year. I'm going to be in a lot of um, be in. Eastern Maryland. So if you just stay on my page, I'll definitely be sharing different places I'll be at. I'm probably going to clown some more this year on social media and um, do, do some do, do some more things and get some more stuff out there. And um, laughter is a medicine, man. It is. It is, and I, I, I like introducing people to this side of me because uh, it's, it, it makes it easy, even when they see me in person, because I don't have to deal with, the, with that false sense, uh, that false perspective. Man of have. God. Yeah, because I don't live up to it. Yeah, for I don't sure. live. Up, I don't live. Up, I, I, I don't. He's I, not who he I, says I he is. That away. Yeah, for sure. I'm just well, a happy guy. Okay, so plug, plug, plug the Facebook or whatever again. Okay, um, probably um in this uh, um Facebook dot com forward slash. I think what is it? Alexio Blue. If you look up Alexio Blue, um, uh, B. Alexio B. Yeah, Alexio B. Yeah, that's that's my Facebook page. Um, my personal page. I'm gonna. Prob I'm probably gonna do a t after photo shoot this year. I'm gonna do a work on my public page. But pretty much, I'm just nice, normal dude. Just reach out to me. Hey, uh, my book is on Amazon.com. My first book, um, the ABC is a prophecy, and a fundamental. It's called a fundamental guide to revelatory ministry. It's a comprehensive, um, probably first look that I ever got into that I did to explain a number of different things I saw regarding the prophetic because I was just frustrated that. I couldn't find a resource that just gave a comprehensive look into the supernatural and to dreams and visions and all that stuff. So if you want it from a, a pretty much a kind of charismatic viewpoint, um, I definitely need to upgrade it and do some work with it. But it's it's, it's a first snapshot into my life and to how it is that I think and how it, um, and what my experience and journey was like uh, that led me to this place, a space that I'm in. Awesome. Good stuff, man. Uh, excited to uh, to see what you got coming, and uh, it's a blessing to know you, brother. And there's a bunch of people uh, in chat already. They they uh, follow you on Facebook, maybe because I shared some of your stuff. I don't know, but they they follow your memes and stuff, and they're sitting there saying how good it is and stuff. So good stuff, yeah, man. To be acquainted I, I, with you. I, I, it's, it's good. It's good to know that that I'm, that I'm helping people, that I'm adding joy to their life as well as challenging them to think a different way. Man, that's what it's about, bro. Just making people think, and if that's it, if that's it, like just you know and, and it, it that unlocks st something in people man you know let them t even if they you know they they take it away whether a lot of times it's a it may feel like a jab at first like hey what do you mean because they because you have this agreed upon belief that you think is doctrine or, ch or church truth mm -hmm. or whatever the case is and when you hear anything against that contrary the first you know notion is to kick it out but it's something that just mm -hmm. kind of resonates and makes you think a little bit, dude. And uh, any way that you can do that through music, like I do, or podcasts, memes, are, memes are huge, man. This is there's so much theology that are that's being taught and learned, and so much being communicated through memes these days. It's really Absolutely. interesting. Make it's kind of like um, uh, hieroglyphs or something at this point. A whole it's idea a in a picture with two, you know. Baby Yoda's taken over though. I don't know if you've done any Baby Yoda memes. I, I haven't done the one as yet, but I've been I've been watching them. Um, <laughs> now, what I did was you remember it? You remember yeah, the yeah, movie? Yeah. My daughter watched it last a, night. Did, she got it. Yeah. I did a whole series with that, and I just went. 
I went in. And I promise you, I will say things that you, like, I legit have real pastors of churches in me. Like, why would you just leave us alone? Yeah. Like, just leave us alone. And train, train, and leave us alone in lecture. I'm like, I'm trying, but y'all keep messing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all giving me too much content. I can't. Exactly. <laughs> and ain't nobody, ain't nobody, ain't nobody calling y'all on the carpet for y'all foolishness. So it's my job, by the grace of God. It's funny, <laughs> man. Well, uh, it's good, to, good to call you brother, man, and and be in this this uh, this this uh, spiritual walk with you, man. And we'll do it again, brother. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Oh, maybe this year, between this year and next year, we could meet up. Um, because it would be really cool to say you're in Alabama. Yeah. Okay, cool. I, I never been to Alabama. I need to find a reason. Me, me, you, and Calvin need to meet up this. Oh, we talked about Alabama. me and Calvin talked about something because he's not too far either. So that'd be awesome if we can for real. Exactly, but let me know because I um I have two more vacation days that I haven't done anything with, which I haven't set aside yet for 2020. Um, that this would be a good. Give some, something nice and controversial to give them something else to call me a false prophet about. <laughs> For sure. We just did a, uh, uh, without giving too much information, <laughs> we just did our, <laughs> we just did a conference was, uh, the Christ consciousness conference. And, uh, we, I, uh, mm. I didn't do it at a church. So we rented, uh, I rented a, um, universal church, like a Ooh. universalist church or whatever. Um, and, uh, and somebody was sharing my stuff, and I think it was my buddy who's in chat here. And it was like, "Hey, that guy's supposed to be speaking at a Universalist church. You might be, you might gotta watch out." I was like, "They're not gonna let us come into re- you know regular churches talking about exactly." Which, which I'll tell you what. Let me let me say this: a lot of churches are opening up. I told Calvin this though. I, I run with a group of people, man, who are really uh, pushing the uh, pushing the envelope. I mean, you know the charismatic movement, but it's it's a little bit more inclusive these days. Depending mm-hmm. on where you go, along you got to te- you got to go places that that structure's been torn down though, like because you can discern that, and that's the most disgusting thing that you can discern where that hierarchy's there, and you got to fight this boss, and you got to get through this boss, and you got to email this boss to talk to the pastor, like the weird church structure, mm-hmm. like seeing that. But as far as like a more of a grassroots spiritual movement in in the Christian community, like I've been embraced lately, and it's really weird because I've been on the fringes and on the outskirts of it for so many years. And I thought I was alone, mm-hmm. but again, there's so many other people who are having beautiful spiritual encounters. They're more inclusive. They're open to ask questions. Even if they don't agree with everything that I do, I'm open about it. Hey, this is what I do. This is what it means to me. Mm-hmm. Even though you don't believe it or don't endorse it, they're still like, Hey, you're a brother, man. I see God using you. I see God in your life. I vouch mm-hmm. for you. Like versus in back in the day. Oh, really? You do that? See ya. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're just expecting everyone to still be doing that, but there are like a lot of grassroots, like Christians, people who love Jesus, who are open to the far out, super, super spiritual stuff. Some of them are way out there, but a lot of them are, are even walking in balance with it. And it's real beautiful. So be, uh, be encouraged with that, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, but I'm definitely looking forward to this journey and to see what it is that God gets done. And let's rock it out. Hey, so what's up, man? Twenty twenty, new vision. Let's make it happen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, brother. Um, I'll be in touch with you. Okay. Yes, I'll give me the link because well, um, well, some of my friends are ready, ready want to sing it. Say it. One is asking me, did I sing? I okay. sing it this in your book. Well, sing it. Bless us with a tune. What you got? Sing, if he's asking. Uh, so I'll, I'll sing. Okay. What what's what's what song? Uh, I'll try to think. Nothing, nothing gospel. <laughs> he said nothing gospel. <laughs> I'm not a mo- uh, not 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 at not at like 10:45 p.m. <laughs> okay, let me suppose like, if I gave you forever, would you take care of me? Yes, I will. Would you take me for granted? Run away. Those wonderful things that you do, it's got me feeling in love with you, in love with you, and loving you is easy, come so natural. That's it. My voice is pretty much dead for the night. So. Well, you you're using your in, in inside voice too, so because I've seen you belt it out, man. There's some videos of him oh, just God. singing yeah. wide open. So it was good though, good stuff. Check out his music. There's a bunch of videos and stuff that he has on his page, preaching the house down, 
and uh, pretty much having conversations like this from the pulpit, which is cool. You just tell it like it is. And, and yeah, it pretty goes. much. What you see is what yep. you get. Yeah, um, it is. Good stuff. Okay, then. All right, brother. Many blessings, man. Have a good one. Thanks so much. All right, Same shalom. You. Peace, peace. Bye-bye. Elixio Balu, B-A-I. L L O U. Go to Elixio B on Facebook. Check him out. Literally, his his memes are are magic. He's got some funny memes. They're gonna make you think. They're gonna challenge you. Uh, laughing at church culture. Laughing at uh, some of the things that we take ourselves too seriously over. Like you got to be able to laugh laugh at some of the stuff. If you don't, you it'll drive you mad. So laughter is a medicine that uh, helps you from stop going mad. That's the medicine. It's laughter works together for our good. Um, uh, you have to you freak out if you don't so man hey uh thank you guys for hanging out with me in the live stream in a live chat on youtube facebook wherever you're listening to this at periscope uh listening to this on the podcasting app shout out to all you beautiful people as well with that i'm gonna say peace and shalom i hope that your 2020 is blessed i hope that there is new vision for you um that you just embrace the energy and the opportunity to step to step into uh whatever it is that you have been wanting to do to step out it's a perfect time to uh to to fire on those goals fire on those those dreams fire on those visions start that business start that podcast start that healing ministry start that coaching career whatever it is step out write that course you have so much to offer every single one of you have something that can help somebody else you've been through something that's a little bit um, that you got some insight on and it can help people who are in it right now or who are going to get going to be going through it very soon. And you can uh, uh, share that with people and um, whatever it is, fire on it, man. 2020 is the year to do it. I encourage all of you to do it. I'm doing it, stepping out, uh, releasing some other things and working on some courses and some some private uh, mentoring sessions and, and things like that that I'm doing for 2020. We just uh, started booking these. Um, and shout out to a couple of people who's already booked seats listening in the live stream. But we have two uh, events coming up already booked. We got an event in uh, January. It's booked out. Then there's another one in April. I'm booking these spiritual events where we're going into the woods and getting a cabin with a bunch of men. And uh, I'm going to be doing some some chanting some spending time in in nature meditation breath work all that cool stuff and uh getting together with with some fellas set, setting that intention for what we want to manifest in 2020 and uh, encounter uh personal revival within our own lives laying some things down picking some things up and moving forward forward with it and i'm really excited about all of this new stuff that we're stepping into just released a new song last night it's a bit different uh, stylistically and uh but i'm getting a, a bunch of good feedback f- uh about it for the most part so if you want to hear it check it out it's a little bit more i wouldn't say crunk it's a little bit more aggressive um and, and more maybe mainstream sounding even so if you want to check that out it's on my uh youtube or on my patreon you can have access to download it as well uh, if you'd like to support patreon.com backslash true seeker 2020 get in where you fit in love you guys we're going to do it again tomorrow morning peace peace Have a book, product, or service you'd like to promote? Look no further. Ad slots and commercials are now available for you to get the word out about what you do on the Truth Seeker Podcast. We give you what you need. Engage the spiritual community and get yourself instantly in front of thousands of listeners who explore the spiritual, paranormal, supernatural, religious, and metaphysical realms. Have your commercial inserted into our entire archive of episodes. That includes the one with Jordan Maxwell, James Gilliland, Dr. Michael Heiser, and that weird one with Busy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony. Stop sleeping on yourself. Know your worth. Let's get the word out today about what you have to offer. Head on over to truthseeker.com and click on advertise for more info. Yo, That's it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.